the uptight billionaire. A clean, fake relationship, romantic comedy. Written by Christina Ryan. Narrated by Amanda Fichter. Chapter 1 Alex sat in the lobby of the hotel, finishing his lunch. He worked the knife back and forth into the last part of the well-done steak, finally managing to slice off the last piece and stuck it into his mouth. His jaw ached as he tried to chew it into edible bites. The business meeting had just ended, but he managed to slip out ahead of time. He'd needed to get out of there before he lost his cool in front of everyone. He swallowed a rubbery piece of meat as the parched air in the room clogged his throat. He cleared his throat loudly, feeling the dryness forming into a fireball. His body temperature hadn't cooled down, not after the shock of seeing Leanne again. It had been three years since she'd left him at the altar, when she believed that his business would be a failure, right before it became a success. And now, here she was, back in his life, all because she hired his company to install software. Alec had been excited by the news of the new client until discovering that Leanne was the company's president. Had he known that she was the client, he would have made sure that someone else take his place at the meeting this morning. Instantly, he felt tension winding itself through his entire body. He'd left the meeting early to collect his thoughts. How was he going to do business with a woman who'd humiliated him? He shook his head, dropped a tip on the table, and was standing to leave when he heard the familiar voice from his unforgettable past. He turned to see Leanne hurrying across the lobby toward him, her bright red hair bouncing in long waves as her green eyes flashed at him. Without hesitation, she literally threw herself in his direction, wrapping her arms around him and squeezing him. She was dressed in a bright pink pantsuit and wore a flashy diamond necklace, both clashing with her red hair. She stepped back and took him in. Oh, Alec, you look better than ever. All I could think about in that stuffy room was you, us. Leanne, we were done a long time ago. He hoped his words would come out stronger, but his voice cracked as he spoke them. She always knew how to hit his soft spots. It's not too late to start over, she cooed. It could be like old times. We were so good together. Alec looked across the room, doing everything to avert his stare from the woman lingering before him. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. You know you miss me. Leanne ran a finger across his hand and gave him a little wink. At one point, that small gesture would have done him in. Why, he could no longer fathom. Now he could see the game she was playing, and all it did was annoy him. I need to get back to my room, he told her, removing his hand from her touch. She shook her head and giggled. You're always so cute when you're mad. He spread his hands out to his sides. It's over. Over. She laughed. So cute but her face grew serious. She dared to move closer to him again, this time tracing a lazy circle across his chin. It's been too long, baby. Let's give us another chance. She removed her finger and fixed her eyes on his. I mean, it would be such a shame if Snapshot Electronics couldn't do business with Innovations Corp. Tension twisted up his back. What was she doing? She was here as a client only. He had no time for her flirting garbage. But he couldn't very well express his impatience toward her, not without probably losing her business. She was making that much clear. Why was she trying to refresh their past, especially since she was the one who had left him? Confusion and frustration washed over him. He took a step back and tripped over the fork that must have fallen off his plate 
when Leanne slammed into him. Barely avoiding a fall, he managed to right himself. He was unable to move for a moment as he looked at her. Leanne had always had such power over him. He hadn't been able to say no to her about anything. And then she'd said no to him. Left him at the altar, humiliated him in front of his family and friends. His colleagues were exiting the conference room and heading to their cars. He wished he'd left the hotel instead of staying back, but he'd been so rattled by Leanne's presence that the only thing on his mind had been to get out of there and settle his stomach. He'd skipped the company breakfast when Tara Jones, the president he and Donnie hired to run innovations, had announced the name of Snapshot Electronics president at the start of the meeting. Alec, Leanne said. She was waving a frantic hand in front of him. Earth to Alec, thinking too much as usual. She closed the space between them, the heat from her breath swarming his neck. He felt the air getting too thin, his throat drying up again. He glanced over his shoulder before backing up once more, this time falling square on his butt. Feeling more uncomfortable than embarrassed, he got back on his feet. He needed to get a grip. But her being here dredged up a past that had taken him a long time to get over, and one he certainly didn't care to remember. Leanne, I really have to go. Finally, she stopped advancing, stuck her hands on her hips, and stared hard at him, letting her mouth fall into her best seductive smile. Not until you let me make up for my past mistakes. He gritted his teeth as she circled behind him, dancing her hand over his shoulders. She was more stubborn than he'd remembered. He knew she wasn't going to take no for an answer. He felt so boxed in. His heart rate spiked, and his hands turned sweaty. Why can't we start over? Her voice was slow, alluring, when she stopped in front of him once more. Because, a woman interrupted as she joined them, I'm his girlfriend. Her dark brown hair hung loosely past her shoulders, underneath a wide-brimmed beach hat. Her eyes were bright and cheery, and she flashed a wide smile. Alec's mouth hung open, inviting more arid air into his throat. He coughed a little, attempting to respond. But before he could get out a word, the woman addressed Leanne. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Callie. She stuck out her hand, a row of bright turquoise bracelets clinking against one another. Leanne glared at Callie, then at Alec. How long has this been going on? Leanne demanded, her arms stretched tightly across her chest, her green eyes blazing with annoyance. Well, I, she, Alec sputtered. Callie wrapped an arm around his waist and giggled as she looked into his eyes. You silly, getting all tongue-tied and shy. Leanne looked hard at Alec, as though expecting his own confirmation of the news. Should he confirm the news? Would Leanne even believe it? What if he squeaked out his acknowledgement? That would give him away. His voice went up a few pitches when he was trying to hide something. Then Leanne would know for sure he was lying. Feeling stuck, he tried to think of something to say, his eyes bouncing from Leanne to Callie, when Callie said, We've only been dating for a few weeks. Finally, he managed to find his voice. Yeah, we met at a bar. Why did he say that? A bar? Really? Would she buy that? He didn't even drink. Leanne was tapping her foot, arms still firmly fixed in front of her. Callie jumped in. And they were having karaoke night, and I just love karaoke. So I hopped up on stage and started belting out that song from Greece. She turned to Alec. What's the name of that song again, honey? You're the one that I want, he suggested, feeling completely discombobulated. Yes, that's it. She giggled again, 
then shook her head. Anyway, long story short, Alec came up to me when I was ordering my meal from the bartender. He said my voice was like the voice of an angel. She sighed and gazed into his eyes. That was all it took. Leaning her head into his shoulder, she added, but I'm the lucky one. Leanne's face had become so scalding red, it looked like she was about to burst. She scowled at them both, spun on her heel, and took off. He looked at Callie in disbelief. Who was this woman? What kind of person walked right into somebody else's business and made it their own? It was bad enough that he had to deal with Leanne, and now this? Their business deal was sure to be ruined now. He could feel his face growing hotter by the minute. Why did you do that? He demanded. She seemed unaffected by his outburst. I wanted to help. I couldn't help but overhear part of your conversation. She was kind of loud. She seemed mildly amused as her lips turned up into a grin, her hands hanging loosely out of her jean pockets. He stared hard at the happy face patch that was sewn onto one of the knees, thinking how childish it was. Quickly, he forced his gaze back to her face. You didn't help. You screwed things up. She'll be at my company's dinner party tonight. How will it look if I don't have my girlfriend there? You know, you should really be thanking me for saving you. Thanking you? His impatience was reaching its peak. I might have lost a major deal, and you want me to thank you? I think you're looking at this all wrong. His impatience shifted into frustration. Who was she to tell him how to think? When I show up tonight without my date, my cover will be blown, and I will have lost her trust. Oh, well, then let me play the part. I don't mind joining you. I can be your date. Then she won't have any reason to second-guess our relationship. His irritation ceased for a minute. He did need something to keep Leanne's sticky fingers off him. But Callie wasn't his type. He shook his head. No, absolutely not. It will never work. I don't date women like... She stiffened, her hands on her hips as she glared at him. Why was she looking at him like that? He sucked in a deep breath. Leanne won't buy it. Then I might lose a client. Her eyes grew big. Your client? Yeah, he said, a bit surer of himself again. She smirked. You might want to be careful in your future pickings. She looked more like a love-thirsty fool than your client. Feeling his blood pressure rising, he blurted out, that's because she's not just a client. My company arrived here at the hotel this morning to start a new contract. Little did I know that I would be stuck with my ex fiance She looked intrigued. Oh, she whispered, making a sizzling sound. You dumped her, huh? What? He was thrown off guard, not expecting to have to answer any personal questions of his own. Is that why she won't leave you alone? Huh? Uh, no. Actually, she left me at the altar a few years ago. Callie's eyes flew open. Wow! I'm sorry. Frowning, she lowered her voice. Then why is she trying to get back together? He huffed, a bit agitated, not liking the direction this conversation was taking. I have no idea. Now, as I was trying to say... I don't need your rescuing. Her deep brown eyes flashed with irritation. It was obvious how uncomfortable you were and how desperately you needed rescuing. His mouth tightened. It was bad enough that he had to deal with Leanne, much less a stranger, who thought she had the perfect solution to end his worries about losing Leanne's business. She shook her head at him as though she pitied him. I'm offering you the perfect solution. Let me be your date so you don't lose her trust. No, there had to be another way. Leanne would never buy it. But I don't date women like you. She stared right at him. What exactly do you mean by that, Alec? 
You're carefree, casual, don't care what others think. The women I've dated have been nothing like that. Leanne knows that. She'll question our relationship. Callie raised an eyebrow. Then tell her it was time for a change. He didn't want to admit it, but what she said made sense. Besides, what other solution was there? There were only a few hours until the party started. If he showed up without his girlfriend, Leanne might break the contract right then. That was too big of a risk to take. Alec cleared his throat and stuck his hand out to hers. Okay, deal. She shook his hand. What time tonight? Six o'clock. Casual dress. You got it. She squeezed his shoulder and took off. He watched after her, feeling tension returning to his body again. He couldn't lose this new client. This had to work. Chapter 2 Callie walked away from Alec, feeling little butterflies in her stomach. What had she done? Sure, she tended to be on the spontaneous side, but setting herself up on a date with someone she didn't even know? Okay, it wasn't a real date, but she was still surprised by her bold move. Callie shook her head, still caught up in the spontaneous moment. A moment that made her feel pretty good, too. Because how often did you get to put somebody like Leanne in her place? But Alec had the nerve to be annoyed with her for helping him out? Well, at least it was only for tonight. Pretend they were in a relationship for a couple of hours, and then get back to the daily grind and never have to see him again. She hurried out to the parking lot pulling out her cell phone as she started the engine. She couldn't wait to tell Danny about today's rendezvous. Danny had been her best friend since college. She was used to hearing about Callie's flirty antics. She laughed, feeling a bit proud of her clever on-the-spot thinking as she dialed Danny. Tonight might actually turn out to be fun. Danny answered on the first ring. Hey, perfect timing. I just got up from a nap. You still coming over? Nope. Danny sounded confused. Why do you sound so happy about it? Callie laughed. No, sorry, I'm not happy about that. I'm happy about something else. Uh-huh. I know that voice. You did something, didn't you? Some clever little strategy that put somebody to shame? Well, I knew it. Who is he and what did he do? He is Alec, and he didn't do anything. Leanne did. Leanne? Who's Leanne? Somebody who thinks she looks good in hot pink. What? Never mind that. It got me a date with a hot guy tonight. Danny's voice turned more serious. But I just saw you. What, less than two hours ago? How did that happen? Where did you find him? Callie smirked imagining her friend's ear pressed into the phone, awaiting her response with bated breath. Well, I took a little excursion to that fancy hotel over near Main Street, up in Big Bear. I was daydreaming, imagining a more promising future, a windfall. You met him at the hotel? Mm-hmm. Seriously. Callie glanced down at her favorite jeans. For a casual dinner party, they were a bit too cutesy, and she didn't really have any nice-looking pants since she'd lost a few pounds recently. Checking her watch, she realized she didn't have much time until the job interview, and the dinner party was soon after that. It's kind of complicated. I gotta go here in a minute. I still need to buy an outfit for tonight, go for my job interview, then attend a dinner party. She dug into her purse and retrieved a piece of grape bubblegum a treat she hadn't given up since elementary school. As she smacked on the wad of gum, she said, Welp, I'll fill you in on all the lovely details later. Are you interviewing with that accounting office downtown? Yep, and with my mad math skills, I'm thinking they'll take me on. Have fun at both events. She smiled. Thanks, Danny. 
Feeling a tad nervous about her new job prospect, she pulled into the parking lot, thankful to find that it was sparse. She only had a few hours to find something decent to wear and to get ready for her job interview, which would give her enough time to make it to the party. A new outfit. She cringed. That meant more money. Money she didn't really have. As she headed to the mall's main entrance, she prayed for a good spring sale. Her dad wasn't doing too well. He feigned like his illness, a rare form of chronic fatigue, which left him constantly tired and often dizzy. Didn't weigh on him too much, but she knew that wasn't true. Her dad had always been a vivacious man, a basketball champ in the neighborhood. But he hadn't played a game in months, and she hadn't seen him in high spirits for about as long. His illness started around a year ago, gradually worsening. She stopped at one of her favorite shops and paused at the window to wipe a tear from her eye. She hoped that tonight would take her mind off things for a while. Experiencing a little surge of excitement about the evening's menu, she waltzed into the store. After browsing through a few different shops, she finally found the perfect pair of jeans. Dark blue with straight lines. Casual enough for a business gathering. Then she found a beautiful silky lavender button-up top with long sleeves to go with it. An employee unlocked one of the dressing rooms for her where she quickly tried on the outfit. Staring at herself in the mirror, she was pleased by what she saw. She actually looked like a grown-up, instead of her usual teenager-like self. Instead of changing back into her smiley-faced jeans and t-shirt, she had the cashier scan her clothes and ring her up. All week, she had been stressing over the job interview. Her dad was sick, and his insurance wouldn't pay most of the bills. He hadn't been able to work in nearly a year, and Callie had lost her own job nearly two months ago when the accounting office she'd worked at for years finally closed its doors due to the owners retiring. Now, burdened with finding a way to pay his medical bills and other expenses, she trusted that this job interview was the answer. Practically prancing to her car, she hummed a tune as she swung her bag of clothes in the hopes that she would fake her way into a good mood. Her palms grew moist as she started the engine. Her heart began to tick like a racing clock. Come on, Callie. It's only a job interview. Except that it wasn't. She needed this money. Desperately. She'd barely slept in weeks, worried how she was going to pay her dad's expenses, much less her own. She did have a little bit of money in her savings account, but it was quickly running out. When she got to the accountant's office, she drew in a deep breath and then many slow breaths as she worked on steadying her heart. You got this, she whispered. She closed her eyes to say a quick prayer, then hopped out and walked with poise into the building. A secretary glanced up as a jingling bell on the door announced Callie's arrival. May I help you? Yes, I'm Callie Tate. I have an interview at 4.30. The secretary consulted the desk calendar. Ah, yes. She punched in a number on the landline. Your interviewee, Callie Tate, has arrived? Yes. She hung up and addressed Callie. Please follow me. She rose and led Callie down a narrow hallway and into an open room, where an older woman sat behind a computer. Ms. Riley? The woman glanced up and nodded. Her pointy glasses balanced on the end of her nose, and the secretary left. Come in, Miss Tate. Have a seat. Callie sat in a nice upholstered chair across from Ms. Riley. Thank you. Ms. Riley's lips were pursed tightly together. All business. Callie's heartbeat amped up a bit. This woman was so serious and Callie felt so anxious. Her elbows were twitching, and her knees kept bouncing. It was taking everything in her to sit still. And to not smile. Her anxiety was floating high. 
She pulled her muscles tight around her mouth so that her lips didn't explode into a nervous laugh. Ms. Riley peeped at her monitor. I see that you have a decade of experience in the field. Her eyes moved to Callie. Impressive? But she didn't sound impressed, just bored. Did this woman really need to fill a position? She certainly didn't act too excited about it. Swallowing hard, Callie meditated on the word breathe. What types of accounting software programs are you familiar with? Callie felt herself relax as she covered the few programs she'd worked with. Ms. Riley nodded in approval. Explain how you decreased operational costs in a previous role. Callie found her breathing turning lighter. These were questions she could handle. She detailed the steps she'd taken and the practices she'd implemented to reduce costs. Ms. Riley's face remained impassive. Was that a good sign? Why do you want to work for us? She asked. Callie smiled. You've established yourself. You have an excellent reputation. I agree with your core values of integrity and professionalism and passion. Ms. Riley nodded, her lips pursed as she scanned a sheet of paper on her desk. Your last position ended this past January, she frowned. The glasses perched permanently on the bridge of her nose. And you haven't been able to find any work since then? Oh, no. She had anticipated a number of things, but not this. The truth was, she had applied at five different places, but she hadn't received any callbacks. But if she said that, Ms. Riley might think she wasn't worth her time either. Before Callie could think of a good response, Ms. Riley said, I appreciate your time. You are certainly qualified. I will consult with my partner and get back to you by the end of next week. Her mouth turned up into what Callie supposed was her attempt at a smile. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Callie put on her best smile and let herself out the door. By the time she got to her car, all the air in her lungs escaped and she fell against the door. Did she even have a chance at getting the job? Ms. Riley seemed rather stiff, and she definitely didn't seem happy about the gap in employment. The interview had so not gone down the way she thought it would. She'd gone in there with all the confidence in the world and left with none. If she didn't get this job, she didn't know what she was going to do. Another month, and she would be late on the rent. Sighing, she slid into the driver's seat. Shaking the negative thoughts away, she switched on her favorite radio station and allowed the Motown beat of the miracles fill her head. If she focused on the energy of the upbeat songs, she might start feeling better. Besides, she had a dinner party to attend. Maybe the evening wasn't shot after all. Chapter 3 Lounging at one of the window tables, Alex stared out at the surrounding cliffs. They halted at the juncture where the beautiful mountains of Big Bear toppled below, snow-covered and whimsical, as though refusing to give up Christmas time, even though it was now the beginning of March. All of Innovations Corp. were milling about the dining area, picking at hors d'oeuvres, drinking wine, enjoying light conversation. Donnie, in his typical best friend fashion, attempted joking around with him. But Alec found himself overwired and overtired. He was unable to focus, and that troubled him because he was the kind of man that didn't let things get to him. His mind kept replaying what would happen at tonight's dinner. What if Callie didn't show up at all? Maybe she was as serious about pretending to be his girlfriend as she was about actually being his girlfriend. Normally, he didn't let people get to him, but this was Leanne. He had to go to the extreme to convince her he wasn't available. Feeling his muscles grow taut, he rose from his seat and walked to a far corner of the room, away from the bustling noises. He had to get his head on straight. He couldn't lose his cool in front of his colleagues. 
Tonight was a new chapter for innovations, a step toward a bigger and brighter future. He would project that assurance, even if it meant burying his concerns about Leanne. Sucking in a deep breath, Alec shut his eyes. He let out the stifling air in his chest. Crossing the room, he came to the mini buffet, where he filled a plate with deviled eggs, cheese cubes, and dry celery, before taking a seat at an empty table, away from the crowd. But he hardly touched his food, his mind straying once more to tonight's fake date. If Callie didn't show up, what would Leanne do? Continue being restless in her pursuit? Or would she scoff at him and take her business elsewhere? He fanned the air in front of his face with a cloth napkin. The room was too hot. Why did they have the heat on? Oh, great. Here he was again, losing it. Get a grip. Alec tugged at the collar of his shirt, feeling like he was suffocating. He rose from the table and tracked down a waiter. Water. I need water. He looked at Alec like he was some strange entity, before nodding and handing him a glass of ice water off his tray, which Alec quickly downed. He had to stop thinking like this. He was driving himself crazy. Breathing out like he'd finished a race, he wiped a bit of spillage from his chin, turned around, and smacked his shoulder into Callie's. Oh, there you are. Callie's face lit up as she squeezed his hand. Heat flooded into his neck and cheeks. Oh no, was he actually blushing? He looked around to see that, thankfully, everyone seemed too preoccupied to notice. He turned back to her. You made it. Of course I did, sweetie. Did you think I would miss this? I mean, fancy appetizers and drinks, and I hear that they're serving steak tonight. My favorite. She pecked his cheek. Wow, she was really good at this. You eat meat? She arched an eyebrow at him. He shrugged. It's just that every woman I've ever dated has been a vegetarian. And how many women have you dated? Oh, not a lot. I mean, just three. And only one, seriously. Was she being serious? Did she really care? So, where is she? Callie looked around the room. Who? She faced him, cocking an eyebrow. Leanne, of course. Clearing his throat a little too loudly, but realizing it was too late for him to do anything about it, Alec took her hand and guided her to his table, where he pulled out her chair. She smiled at him. Oh, a true gentleman. I thought they were extinct. Really? He was truly baffled. Was chivalry that rare? His dad had taught him that showing a woman her worth was one of the most important things a man should do. Alec found himself staring at her, unable to look away. Before, she'd been dressed like, well, a teenager. But now, she wore an attractive silky shirt and sharp-looking pants that brought out her beauty, something he hadn't noticed before. Her long, wavy hair was a deep chocolate brown, and her almond-shaped eyes were equally dark, complementing her hair perfectly. Before he could give it any further thought, Tara took a spot at the front of the room, behind a podium. It's a good day, isn't it? Hoots and hollers took over the room. Tara glanced out the window, before turning back to everyone. Such a beautiful day, too. A perfect day, in fact, for a new beginning. Her white teeth gleamed. As you know from last night's conference, Innovations acquired a new client, Snapshot Electronics, who may potentially be the most important client we have ever had. She stepped around the podium and swept her gaze across the room. He wished he could feel the same excitement she did. But the fact that he'd now have to deal with Leanne again unsettled his stomach like a worm inside a bad peach. Get ready for change. Good changes. Exciting changes. She paused for dramatic effect. 
a small smile uncurling from her lips. And if all goes well, financial changes that may benefit all of us. A rush of energized sounds filled the room at the prospect of a salary increase. Alec and Donnie had met with Tara a little bit ago to discuss giving everyone raises. Alec had forced himself to push aside all personal issues. It didn't matter if he had a past with the president of the company. This was business, and her company would give them a lot of it. He would make it work, though he was still trying to convince himself of that. Looking back to Callie, he said, Leanne should be here any minute. In the meantime, thank you for doing this. That smile appeared on her face again, the amused smile. It made him feel like he was being caught off guard, but why, he didn't know. And that was another thing. Alec was the one with ideas, the one who instigated things. But here was a woman starting a rendezvous with him, the one getting things rolling. Not something he was used to, for sure. Feeling baffled now, he let out a quiet breath of relief when Leanne and her colleagues strolled into the lobby. Callie touched his arm, and he yanked his attention away from his ex and toward Callie. She was smiling at him, her expression calm, put together. Somehow, he found himself absorbing some of that peace. If you don't mind me asking, why did she leave you? Alec's forehead creased. Leanne loves money, first and foremost. When we were together, I wasn't making the kind of money she thought was acceptable, the kind she deemed successful. When she thought I would never make something of myself, make real money, as she called it, she decided to leave me. That's awful. I'm so sorry she did that to you. Thank you. He looked nervously around the room. Don't worry. It's going to work out. She slid her hand slowly off his arm, and the sensation of her skin brushing against his sent an electric spark through him. Of course, it had been a while since he'd been on a date, even though this wasn't a real date. I'm that obvious, huh? Her smile broadened, and he couldn't help but notice how beautiful her mouth was. She wore a light brown lip gloss, which accentuated her soft brown skin. We'll convince her we're a couple and have fun doing it. Her eyes twinkled. He didn't know how she could feel so sure about this. Of course, she didn't know Leanne, how determined she could be. But Callie had showed up. So had Leanne. Now to pretend like Callie was his girlfriend. If he got through the evening, if everything went according to plan, he could relax again. Chapter 4 Callie smoothed out the sleeves of her new silky shirt and took in a deep breath as she did her best not to get freaked out when Leanne entered the room. She'd already gotten a little taste of the woman, which had indeed proved interesting, and it was only a matter of time until Leanne would make her way over. Would they be able to pull this off? For Alec's sake, she hoped so. But was she making a mistake being here? Sure, she'd done some impulsive things before, though not with a stranger. Her little adventures involved guys she'd known from work or the restaurants she'd frequented. Alec looked around the room, in mild anticipation, as he tugged on the cuff of his dress shirt. He was wearing a pressed deep blue button-up shirt and dark jeans. Very nice. A man who cared about his appearance. He didn't seem like a psycho or anything. But Steph had seemed okay, too. And he turned out to be a complete jerk who cared only about money and other women. She felt her whole body tighten up. Steph's name caused stress-induced paralysis. Closing her eyes, she said a quick prayer, asking God to remove her ex-boyfriend from her thoughts and to bring her full attention to the present. She opened her eyes, to see Alec's face all red. His eyes, which she'd noticed for the first time contained a hint of hazelnut, stared straight ahead. 
Callie discreetly looked in that direction. Leanne had a big, plastic smile plastered on her face as she stared at Alec. She winked at him and slowly slinked across the room. What gall! Flirting with her ex-fiancé when he was clearly here with someone else. Maybe this wouldn't be as easy as she thought. Callie snuggled up to Alec, squeezing his arm as she whispered into his ear. We have to look like a couple. Leanne tossed her fiery hair behind her neon yellow top, her eyes rapidly wandering across each table, her long, bright pink fingernails waving in anticipation like an untamed cat. Did this woman wear nothing but electric 80s colors? Callie's dislike for the woman was growing by the minute. Turning back to her date, Callie continued to whisper in his ear, hoping that Leanne was paying attention. By the way, what kind of company do you work for? It's probably best that I know as much about you as possible so that Leanne doesn't suspect anything. He nodded, before finally breaking his gaze from the red-headed creep. He cocked his head and leaned his face close to hers. She could feel the warmth of his breath against her neck. Electricity sizzled throughout her body. If this was her body's way of reacting to being close to him, how was she supposed to manage a kiss? Well, for starters, I work at Innovations Corp. Sounds innovative, she teased, doing her best not to fall head over heels for real. Thankfully, he seemed oblivious to the way his near presence was making her feel. All businesslike, he continued. We offer all kinds of software and hardware products as our primary focus, but we also provide database management. Callie enjoyed watching him discuss the company. He looked so serious, so focused, so unperturbed, forgetting all about Leanne. Unfortunately, she got so caught up in watching him instead of listening to what he was saying, that she missed the details of the company's doings. You said Leanne's your client, right? So what exactly do you do for the company? Are you the boss man or something? Well, my best friend Donnie and I started. He stopped, his lips frozen slightly apart. Callie dared to sneak a peek behind her, her grip loosening a little from Alec's arm. Leanne wasn't at her table anymore. Where was she? She let her eyes roam the lobby, then the front desk, and on toward the bathrooms. She caught Leanne whipping her fire truck red hair to the side as she strolled into the ladies' room. Callie fixed her gaze on Alec again. It's okay. She went to the restroom. She wasn't used to seeing a man out of sorts. Steph had always been confident and in control, flashing his gold paperclip jammed with hundred-dollar bills. Oh, stop it. Not everyone was like that despicable person. Danny had reminded her of that. Now she had to remind herself again. And the fact that Alec was just some guy she was helping out, especially if she was going to pull this fake date thing off. Alec's eyes wandered to the bathroom. Callie felt a chuckle threatening to burst forth from her mouth. At least she wasn't the only one struggling to get their mind off someone else. He shook his head, his hands kneading the tablecloth. His fingernails were nicely manicured. That, plus his nice, casual outfit, resonated classy, an endearing quality in a man. You really think we can pull this off? A bead of sweat emerged across his forehead. Clearly, Leanne had hurt Alec. Of course, what could be worse than being left at the altar? She tried to imagine what it would be like to have to work alongside Steph after what he'd done. A sickening weight curled inside her stomach at the thought of it. No wonder Alec looked so upset. Feeling empathy, she reached over and placed her hand on top of his. She could feel his pulse racing, but he stopped kneading the tablecloth. I dated a guy named Steph for five years. One day he was looking at rings. The next, he had put a ring on someone else's finger. His eyes widened. That's horrible. My point is, I think we can do this. 
Alec tore his gaze from the bathroom and looked at Callie. I'm sorry. Wow, what a lousy date I'm turning out to be. She removed her hand. Oh, no worries. I get it. My nerves would be frazzled, too, if I had to face my ex-fiancé. He raised his eyebrows. You were engaged once, too? Huh? Oh, no, I meant if I were. He nodded, but his mouth stayed open, as though he wanted to ask her more about her past relationships, but he switched gears. The thing is, if we supply her company our services— her success means more success for us, too. That word, success, was practically an alien term to her. She felt a twinge of yearning. Had she impressed Ms. Riley? Would she finally have the job that could afford her financial security? So, what do you do? He asked her. Was he able to read her mind? I just had a job interview. Oh, you're out of work right now. What do you usually do? Accounting. His eyebrows peaked. I took a little of that in college, though I'm sure I'm nowhere near as proficient as you. She dropped her gaze, picking at the tablecloth with her fingernail. Yeah, well, I really need this job to help with my dad. He's sick. He hasn't been able to work for a while. She had never been financially comfortable but it hadn't really bothered her until now, when she could no longer afford to live paycheck to paycheck, not with her dad's debilitating illness. Okay, that's why you took that job interview. Everything is going to work out fine. You're doing everything you can to make ends meet. Alex snapped her out of her anxious thoughts. She's coming back. Quick, what's your favorite restaurant? She looked confused. What? You know, things I should know about you, too. I'm a steak and potatoes kind of guy. Oh, me too. I mean, gal. I love steak, so steakhouses? What about your go-to drink? My favorite drink is water. She laughed. Water? Come on. Not something more flavorful like tea or soda? His face remained serious. Was he always so serious? I don't drink. Can't stand the taste of alcohol. That wasn't what she meant. She was about to ask him if he preferred tea or coffee, or even soda, when she caught the relentless redhead from the corner of her eye. Leanne was creeping through the room. Thankfully, she took her seat at the front table again, giving them some more time to get to know each other. Music, she practically shouted. Alec recoiled from her as though she'd tried to lunge at him. She giggled. Sorry got a little excited. Favorite bands? Uh, yeah, I like Motown music. Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross, Lionel Richie. No way. Me too. His lips pinched together. This guy was going to have to loosen up if they were going to convince Leanne, and if Callie was going to have any fun. His face remained sober, though his mouth slackened a bit. Guess we have some things in common should make our relationship a bit more believable to Leanne. She felt herself relax. Hopefully the strain of Leanne's presence wouldn't put too much a damper on things, and Callie and Alec could enjoy the evening together. Anything to get her mind off the no-job, no-money situation. Chapter 5 Leanne suddenly popped up at their table. Hi, Alec. What a great turnout. Are you as excited as I am about working together? She tucked a loose red hair behind her ear as she flashed a too big smile at him. Alec cringed. The way she said together sounded like it came with a personal ulterior motive, her voice rolling a bit seductively. He glanced at Callie, who was rolling her eyes at the spectacle Leanne was making of herself. At least Callie shared his feelings of annoyance. His voice remained professional as he returned his attention to Leanne. He had to remind himself that Leanne was still his client. Uh, yeah, we are excited to add you as a client and help you along your journey. She plopped down in the seat next to him and released a loud sigh. It's so good to see you again. 
where has the time gone? It seems like only yesterday we were, well, you know. She winked, as though sharing an inside joke. He felt like he was going to get sick, which wasn't good considering that his stomach was empty. Leanne stared at him, with a smirk on her face. He knew he needed to say something, or she would make this whole situation even more uncomfortable. What made her happy? What satisfied her? Oh, right. Compliments. They made her focus on herself and forget about her feelings for someone else. You have made some great strides in your career, Leanne. You acquired your own company, built it into a promising empire. Nothing stood in your way. And look at you now, at the top of your game. Sure enough, the compliment worked. Her face was aglow with pride and self-accomplishment. Leanne started talking about her climbing ladder, boasting about all the ways she'd contributed to Snapshot Electronics, how it wouldn't be anywhere as successful as it was without her. Perfect. He'd gotten her mind off of him and onto herself. Hopefully that meant she would accept his relationship with Callie and leave him alone now. Sure would make working with her go smoother. Wow, Leanne. You've really made something of yourself. Callie's voice seemed deliberately loud. Was she being sarcastic? Annoyed? Sincere? He couldn't quite tell. Leanne snapped out of her self-made speech and glanced quickly at Callie. Then back to Alec. So, you met at a bar? The relief that had washed over him in waves now turned into an iceberg of unease. He immediately regretted ever mentioning a bar. She knew he wasn't a bar kind of guy. Now what was he going to do? What if she canceled the contract? The one-year contract included a convenience clause, which meant that either party could end the agreement at any time. Donnie had suggested including it to make Snapshot Electronics feel unintimidated by a too strict agreement, to make their negotiation feel more friendly, as he'd put it. If he lost her business, his employees would lose faith in him. Tara's announcement pointed to financial gain. If Leanne pulled her company out, he would look like an incompetent owner. Morale would go down, word would get around. Yeah, weird, isn't it? I mean, you know Alec. He can't stand drinking, and there he was, in a bar. Callie winked at him as she continued. That was actually the first thing I learned about him, that he didn't like alcohol, that he was only there to try something new, which was karaoke. She tilted her head at him and gazed into his eyes. Little did he know that he would be meeting someone new, too. Wow. She came up with all that just now? How did she keep doing that? She was definitely not the kind of woman he'd ever dated. But maybe that wasn't such a bad thing, even if this was just a fake date. Right. Karaoke. Leanne's words came out gritty and calculating, as though she didn't quite believe their story. His heartbeat pinballed across his chest. She saw right through their phony relationship. Although, I didn't get to hear him sing, so I don't know if we'll go back again. Callie looked sideways at him. You don't need to hear me sing. You're not missing anything. Trust me. Leanne snickered. He's right. Her gaze suddenly brushed over Alec, inch by inch. He tried to loosen his collar, except he was wearing a button-down collared shirt. So he ended up scrabbling his fingers against his neck. What was she doing? Why was she putting him in such an awkward position? And why did they have the heat up so high? It had gotten stuffy in here, too. This whole thing was a mistake. Of course it would never work. Leanne sunk her claws into him, and she wasn't about to let go. He was an idiot for believing he could fool her. Leanne glanced once more at Callie and nodded, then turned back to Alec. I'm excited about the future. 
I think our companies will help each other out in the short run, and hopefully into the long run. She stood, threw an uncertain look at them both, and returned to the front of the room. Alec released the stuffy air from his lungs, and it came out sounding like helium escaping from a balloon. Callie giggled as she looked at him. What? He was utterly confused. How could she laugh at a time like this? I think she bought it. I mean, she's a little unsure, maybe, but she's believing it. Really? We pulled it off? I'm pretty sure. Callie grinned at him and kissed his cheek. I have to make it look real. She's still watching. He glanced at Leanne, who was indeed looking their way. Alec, she whispered, you weren't supposed to make it obvious. He kissed her back on the cheek, to make it seem real. She nodded. To seal the deal. We're poets, and didn't know it. He nodded absentmindedly, his brain still reeling from what they'd pulled off. Sure, it seemed to be working, at least for tonight. But what if they ran into each other again? And then there were the upcoming meetings and negotiations. He couldn't be seen without a girlfriend every time. The old anxiety caved in on him. His energy was zapped, his brain fried. How could he keep up the charade? The air in his lungs constricted. Excuse me, I need to use the restroom. Callie nodded as he made his way through the tables. Leanne was having a conversation with Jack, one of his employees in the financial department. They were only a few feet from him. Big Bear is quite a change from your big city living, Jack was saying. Leanne said, Yes, but I just love living here. There are so many incredible people tucked away up here. It's such a great little community. At first, I didn't care for the snow. Alec kept walking, not wanting her to think he was eavesdropping. His heart rate accelerated. She'd moved from L.A. to here? Why? She was a big city gal. Living in a place like this, he thought, would be too stifling for her. He opened the door to the men's room. Had she moved here because of him? After she left him, he'd gotten out of L.A. and chose the mountains to get some peace and quiet. She knew that was his plan all along. Was she stalking him? He'd had to shuffle a lot of things around to open a branch in the mountains. Donnie already lived in the area, having grown up here, so the new location turned out to be more convenient for him. The whole moving process had been a major headache, though in the end, it had been worth it. But now, this. His stomach bubbled with hunger and nerves. Closing his eyes, he inhaled deeply, slowly, then let it out just as slowly. Opening his eyes, he stared into the mirror. His hair looked disheveled. He must have been running his hands through his hair without realizing it. It was a bad habit of his, sometimes when he got anxious. The thought of her deliberately going out of her way to be near him recharged the sick feeling in his gut. He had to get control. Panic mode didn't look good on him, and it certainly wouldn't instill others' trust in him. He turned on the faucet and splashed cold water on his face to jolt himself away from his nerves. When he sat back down next to Callie a moment later, his troubled mind replayed what he'd overheard. Leanne lived in town. He was bound to see her, something he was never prepared for. It had been one thing to work with her. That was all business. But if they came across each other in public, in an informal environment, there was no telling how she'd be. If she moved here because of him, then she had expectations. Or maybe he was looking at this all wrong. It was possible that she moved here for other reasons, reasons that had nothing to do with him. Well, at least not entirely. Sweat beaded across his forehead, and heat flushed his face. He reached toward his neck to loosen his tie, except he wasn't wearing one. Dinner is served. A waiter set two plates of heaping gourmet food in front of them, 
and a water for him and a Pepsi for her. He'd been so absorbed by his thoughts, he failed to realize that the servers were busy tending the tables. You okay? Callie stabbed into her steak. Sure. You're worried about her, about what to say next time? I wouldn't be, if I knew we wouldn't be running into each other. What do you mean? She stuck a piece of steak into her mouth. Distracted by a woman who actually ate meat, he wondered what else about her would surprise him. She was nothing like Leanne, or any of the women he dated, or any woman he'd ever known, for that matter. Hoping to settle his stomach a bit, he took a bite of his chicken parmigiana. I overheard one of my employees talking to her about her move to Big Bear, all the way from L.A. Her eyes grew big. Because of you? I'm guessing so. I hope I'm wrong. He tried to swallow a piece of meat, but it got stuck in his throat. He grabbed the water in front of him and took deep gulps, dislodging the food. Callie frowned at him. You all right? No. Why hide it? What good would that do? He hadn't felt so frazzled in his life. At least he could share that truth with someone, even if he never saw her again. Listen, her move here may be harmless, or it may mean something more. But if it does, why would she wait this long to do it? He shrugged, feeling at a total loss for understanding any of it. Hmm. Callie watched his ex fiancee moving around the room, engaging in brief conversations as she moved from table to table. I'm guessing this new company of hers really boosted her ego, gave her a type of confidence she didn't quite have before, a confidence that boosted her boldness. Could it be that her new success brought with it the audacity to try and win you back? That did make sense. Why hadn't he thought of that? He stared at Callie, surprised by her once more. Not only was she attractive and witty, she had brains, too. Chapter 6 This was turning out to be more fun than Callie had expected, and she was impressed by her ability to pass herself off as the make-believe girlfriend. She couldn't help but notice that Alec didn't seem so at ease. The whole thing with Leanne definitely had him flustered. Callie kind of wished she knew him a bit better so that she could help him the best she could. As it was, she wondered if her lighthearted attitude was doing anything to ease his mind. He seemed so serious about everything. Sipping on her Pepsi, she let her eyes wander to Leanne who was busy making rounds with all of Innovation's corp. She sure didn't waste any time with anybody. Alec had his work cut out for him. She put her soda down and dug into her baked potato. The food tasted so delicious. She'd been to Big Bear several times before, and to this hotel occasionally, but she'd never eaten off the menu. She was glad for the fake date, free food and entertainment. Plus, she was helping a stranger. But her mind strayed to her dad, to the bills, to the job interview. Ms. Riley would be getting back to her next week. She had to get the job. The other positions she'd applied to paled in comparison. They either didn't pay enough, or they only gave her part-time work. If she didn't get this job... She didn't know what she would do. The buttery potato tasted sweet as she swallowed her first bite. If only finding work tasted as good. Alec, you have a moment? A young woman popped up beside him. She wore a tan-colored suit with burgundy trim. Next to her stood a young, nicely dressed man. Callie, this is Tara, the president, and Donnie, my right-hand man, my best friend. She shook their hands, one at a time. Enjoying the evening? She asked them both. Yes. Alex's voice came out slightly loud and strong, as though he wanted to ensure Tara knew that the evening was fine. Yes, thank you. Callie shot a smile at her. 
How are things with our new client? Good. Very good, Alec stressed. Callie could feel the tension running off Alec. Alec took a sip of his drink as he engaged in light conversation with Donnie. Something about going skiing. Have you been up here before? Tara asked Callie. Yes, I love sightseeing, especially in the village. Lovely. Well, it was nice to meet you. Enjoy your dinner. Smiling, she took off. Nice to meet you, Callie. Donnie smiled, patting Alec's shoulder, then followed Tara back to their table. Alec slid down in his seat and set aside his silverware, seemingly having lost his appetite. He seemed deep in thought. She didn't know what to say. Don't suppose you want dessert, she asked, scooting the rest of her meat around on her plate. He managed a small smile. No. His face quickly transformed back to a stone-edged look. He ran a hand over his mouth before clearing his throat. They both watched as Leanne left the building and headed to her vehicle. Alec visibly relaxed. I don't know that Leanne bought it, at least not all the way. She won't stop looking over at us, mostly at me. Callie bit her lip. Yeah, I noticed that too. He took a sip of water. So, what are your plans for the rest of the week? Well, I'm hoping to start my new job at the tax office. He looked taken aback. Oh, right, you had that interview. Yep, I'll be hearing something next week. Why? If I don't see you again after tonight, I wish you all the best with your job. Okay, thanks. They both stood from the table. He slid a piece of paper into her hand. In case I can ever repay you for what you did for me. It was nice to meet you, Callie. You too. She kissed his cheek and looked at his card. I appreciate it. Thank you for doing this tonight. You're welcome. She strode away from the lively room and out the doors to her vehicle. She frowned. Because what was on her mind wasn't the money or her dad or the job, but the kisses she'd given him. She told herself it was for appearance's sake to fool Leanne. Except Leanne was no longer in the hotel when she last kissed Alec. And every time they touched, she'd gone weak in the knees. Chapter 7 Alec took one last sip of his water and felt like he'd swallowed one of those giant pain pills. The stress of dealing with his ex had lodged itself right in the middle of his heart. With this last drink, he finally managed to gulp it down. Now he could breathe again. The night turned out far better than he'd hoped for. Callie showed up, did what she was supposed to do, and did it well. Surprisingly well. Like she did this for a living. He laughed quietly. Callie was something else. Where were women like her when he'd been in the dating world? Wait. Why was he thinking such ridiculous thoughts? He was in no way looking to date again. Tonight was a setup. A trick to get Leanne off his back. That was all. He shook his head, as though to shake the notion of considering Callie, or anyone, as a potential girlfriend. He had no desire to enter into a romantic relationship. Innovations was his relationship. That went well. Leanne hopped into the seat next to him and shuffled it closer until it touched his. Uh, yeah, it did. What was she still doing here? So, I think we have some things to talk about, don't you? There went his hands turning sweaty and his heart rate spiking. Had she figured out the ruse? Is that what she was about to say? She knew he'd made the whole relationship up, and she was done with their contract. He scratched behind his ear, not knowing what the heck to do with his hands. Her bright pink nails sparkled as they tapped the tablecloth. You and Callie aren't serious, are you? I mean, you haven't known her for very long. 
Her fingers wiggled across the table, like serpentine creatures, as they made their way to the crook of his elbow. Alex scooted his arm back. We are. She smirked, as her fingernails tickled up his arm. You are what? Serious. She pouted and stood. Then she moved behind him and started massaging his shoulders. I'm looking forward to seeing you again, Alec. She came around to stand in front of him. This is going to be a good relationship, a fresh start. He startled. What do you mean? With innovations, she said matter-of-factly. I agree. A good, professional, business relationship. She nodded. I gotta go. Her smile was less flirty and more aloof. Good. This time, he watched her head outside and take off in her car. Dude, you okay? Donnie looked concerned as he stepped up to the table. He hated feeling out of sorts. That he'd been so caught up in thinking about a woman again troubled him. He had no desire to take on the complications of a relationship. It was the last thing he needed, especially after what Leanne had put him through. And now, this little game she was playing. I'm fine, he muttered. Donnie's eyes lit up. Ready for Malibu Bay? Malibu Bay happened to be Alec's favorite getaway spot. The beautiful beach contained canyon trails and waterfalls and plenty of shops and restaurants. Growing up not too far from the beach, he'd spent a lot of his days there. Alec groaned. Leanne would be there, too. Innovations was holding a retreat as a trust-building gathering between his company and Snapshot Electronics, a way to showcase their appreciation for their business and to ensure SE's continued loyalty as their client. Uh, yes, he managed to say. Tara joined them. Leanne has built an impressive network. She has, Alec agreed. But he'd barely gotten through seeing her today. How would he get through a whole week? You don't look happy, Tara frowned, unaware of his connection with Leanne. Leanne is my ex fiance Apparently she's pining after me still, even though she broke off the engagement, he explained. Tara gaped. I assumed you were okay with everything. I mean, you said yourself this was the kind of client you'd always dreamed of, someone who needed all of our services. He nodded. Yes, with the assumption that you would be working with her, and that I wouldn't have so much contact. And before I knew, she wanted me back. But Tara seemed unperturbed. But why does it matter if she likes you? Surely she could see tonight how happy you are with Callie. She could? He looked happy with her? But it was just a fake date. And he wasn't that good of an actor. Was he? The whole setup was a bit complicated. He didn't really feel like going into it, especially since he was supposed to look like he had it all together. This is a fantastic move for us. He flashed a smile that was partially genuine. If he didn't pull himself together, he was going to hurt his business, potentially the loss of trust from his employees, and then the company's morale would drop, for sure. He intended to stick to the promises he made, no matter the challenge. Tara looked satisfied with his response and left him alone with Donnie. Dude, what's going on? Donnie asked, as he sat back into his seat. Who is this Callie? It's like she came out of nowhere. She did. Just a girl I met? Well, that's specific. Alec, how serious are you? You're the one who told me you weren't interested in playing the field. I'm not playing. His eyes widened. You mean you're serious about her? No, no. Oh, man. His head was all messed up. Nothing he said came out right. It's not serious. He cleared his throat. Donnie, what I'm about to tell you has to stay between us. Sure, dude, of course. Callie sort of came to my rescue today, 
when Leanne wouldn't leave me alone. She pretended she was my girlfriend. But to really ensure she bought it, Callie offered to be my pretend date tonight. His mouth dropped open. A fake date? I didn't know people really did things like that. He shook his head. Apparently, we didn't do a good enough job. Leanne came on to me again. She thinks Callie and I are together, but she doesn't think we're serious. So tell her it is. I did, man. She practically crawled all over me in response. I knew it wouldn't work. Callie was great, but Leanne could see right through me. So invite Callie to the retreat. He looked at Donnie in surprise. For an entire week? We hardly know each other. She'd never agree to that. Donnie shrugged. Doesn't hurt to ask. Besides, do you have a better idea? He smirked at his best friend. No. But as Donnie walked away, he realized he didn't have her number. He had to come up with something else then. But what? Chapter 8 Callie set her purse down on the couch and walked to the back of the house to her dad's bedroom. The door was shut, which probably meant he was taking a nap. She knocked quietly and heard him murmuring. Deciding he was still in the throes of sleep, she gently cracked open the door. Sure enough, he was tangled up in the sheets, his mouth slightly open, a soft snore emanating from it. She quietly closed the door. She made her way to the kitchen, where she threw a TV dinner into the microwave. She'd never liked cooking, so she usually ended up eating some type of generic meatloaf or pork chop slathered in a bed of tangy soup. Her dad seemed to be sleeping a lot more these days, which made her worry. The doctors had prescribed some medication to stimulate energy production in his red blood cells, and some pain medication for his increasing muscle pain, but nothing really worked. Honestly, she didn't think her dad being medicated was the best solution. So far, all the meds had done was make him sleepy in the daytime, sometimes even dizzy. And the insurance policy covered only some of the expense. He was getting worse. In addition to the fatigue, he'd begun to develop severe and frequent headaches, a common symptom of his syndrome. In the beginning, he'd come home after playing basketball, feeling completely wiped out. After a few weeks, he quit altogether and turned to logic puzzles, but he grew tired of concentrating after only a few minutes. Concentration issues were another symptom of chronic fatigue, they later learned. Of course, he tried to make it all seem insignificant, but it wasn't normal for him. That's when she convinced him to go to the doctor. She sniffed as she watched her dinner tray spin around. The microwave dinged. She pulled out the meal. She had no appetite, but she knew she had to keep up her energy, take care of herself, so there wouldn't be two sick people in the house, so she could take care of her dad. After plopping on the couch and tuning in to a mindless sitcom, she nibbled at her watery food and pondered the other night with Alec. She'd only spent a couple of hours with the guy, but she couldn't stop thinking about him. Aside from his obvious good looks, something about him kept pulling her back to that dinner date. Before she could dig into possible reasons why her mind continued to float to that time, her cell phone rang. Glancing at the phone, she saw that the incoming call came from the accounting office, the one where Ms. Riley had interviewed her. She dropped her fork, set the tray on the cushion beside her, and snapped up the phone. Hello? May I speak to Ms. Tate? A voice, not Ms. Riley's, said. This is Ms. Tate. Oh, hello. This is Ms. Riley's office calling. She wanted me to thank you for coming in last week. While your resume is highly competitive, the job did go to someone else, but thank you so much for applying. Thank you, she said numbly, the phone sliding out of her hand. After she took a deep breath, she made sure to end the call and shut off the television. 
She sat there, in the sudden stillness, doing her best not to cry. The other interviews hadn't panned out either, but it was this one she had counted on. She was so sure that they would bring her on board. How could this be happening? There was almost nothing left in her bank account now, and the bills continued to stack up. Something had to give. She looked at her unfinished dinner, picked up the tray, and brought it to the kitchen, where she tossed it in the trash can, her appetite completely gone. She bit back the tears that threatened to rush down her face. What was she going to do? If she didn't get a job soon, they would be in dire straits. Her phone rang again. She frowned warily at it over on the couch, reluctant to take another call, certain it would only be more bad news. Slowly, she made her way back to the living room. She didn't recognize the number. It was probably spam. She shook her head and let it ring, then went back to the kitchen. She shuffled about, wiping down the counters and appliances, thinking about calling Danny. She worked for a media group as a junior software developer, not in Callie's field at all. Maybe her company needed to fill a position. At this point, she'd take anything. A moment later, her phone twittered with a new message. Stepping back to the living room, she grabbed the phone and listened to the voicemail. Ms. Tate, this is Dr. Gordon Matthews calling. If you could call me, it's regarding your father and a new experimental procedure. He left his number, which she quickly punched in. Could this be the answer they'd been looking for? The receptionist put her on hold for a minute. Dr. Matthews quickly went into the details of the treatment. A peptide called CT38 would be administered to the participants over a two-month period. The drug would downregulate CRF2, a stress receptor, to restore a normal stress response and potentially eliminate disease signs and symptoms. It sounded so promising, something her dad would respond well to. But, as always, the cost of it weighed heavily on her mind. How much is covered by insurance? Unfortunately, it hasn't been approved by any insurance policies, so the expenses would have to be paid out of pocket. He named the cost of it, which was, of course, way out of her range. I see. If finances change, I will be in touch. Thank you for letting me know. She hung up, feeling more depressed than ever. Sinking into the couch, she let her face fall into her hands, her elbows painfully sticking into her knees. Then she had a good cry. Wiping her face, she said, Lord, help us. Help me to trust you. The next morning, Callie felt refreshed as she stepped out of the shower. She brushed through the tangles of her long hair and smiled at her reflection in the mirror. Today was going to be a good day. Apparently, her dad felt refreshed, too. I'm going for a walk. He smiled broadly, a gleam of happiness shining in his eyes. She smiled back as he made his way outside. She recalled that same look of hope in her dad's face when the chemotherapy seemed to be working on her mom. Technically, it had worked for a few months, until the cancer returned. She missed her mom. The three of them had been close, doing everything together. When she died, shortly after Callie started dating Steph, she'd been devastated. She'd never lost someone close to her before. Thinking about the love her parents shared made her mind wander to Alec. The last time she'd been in love had been completely heartbreaking. The strap of her purse caught her eye. She reached over and set the purse on her lap and dug into its contents before pulling out Alec's card. She stared at the phone number on it, then dialed it. What was she doing? Would he even want to hear from her? It did seem weird to call someone you knew for such a short period of time. If she called Danny, on the other hand, 
Callie would probably break down into tears again, since she was so close to her and knew everything she and her dad had been going through. Talking to a stranger might get her mind off it all, at least for a little while. Hello? His voice sounded deeper over the phone. Uh, Alec? Yes, this is Alec. Who's this? It's Callie, your fake date. Callie? Why did he sound so happy to hear from her, or was she imagining it? How are you? Did you get the job? I'm... No, the job didn't work out. Sorry to hear that. He truly sounded sorry. What a nice guy. How did things go after I left? His voice turned solemn. Not so good. Leanne didn't completely buy our relationship. Still after you, huh? Yeah, but that's not your fault. You did great. You were perfect. It's on me. I make a terrible actor. Her heart swelled with the compliment he'd given her. Are you busy this week? She laughed. Unfortunately, no. I really hate to ask you this, but I was wondering if you would be willing to do me another favor. Well, more like it would be me doing you a favor at the same time. You mean to keep up the ruse? He sounded embarrassed. Yeah. Next week, my company will be attending a one-week retreat in Malibu Bay. And so will Leanne and her business. The retreat is our way of thanking her for more business and potentially a larger client base. A sort of trust-building gathering. He paused before rushing on. Lots of business and social interacting go on at these things, We'll be in constant contact that whole time. I'm sure she'll go out of her way to ask me lots of questions. Or to ask you out. He sounded surprised. I'm sure you're right. He sounded hesitant. Would you be interested in coming along? Just until I know that she's over me, for sure. Um, I don't know that it's such a good idea. Her forehead crinkled as she looked around in uncertainty. One night was one thing, but a whole week? I'll pay you. Was he serious? You're doing me a favor. You'll be saving me from my ex. If she thinks I'm in a serious relationship, if she sees that it wasn't a ploy, she'll back off. All you have to do is make it look like the real thing. A week is a long time, I mean, considering how little we know each other. I agree which is why it's so hard for me to ask you this. I don't blame you. He laughed lightly. I understand what a strange request it is. Of course, they wouldn't even be in this situation had she not thrown herself into his life in the first place. She liked Alec, and she did want to help him. But she also needed to find steady employment. How much would you pay me? She looked over at her dad's room. The money would really help out. She shook her head, even though Alec couldn't see her. No, I really need to concentrate on finding work. I will pay a very generous amount, more than enough to make up for your lost wages and to help take care of your dad. Her heart fluttered with surprise and joy. If she could afford the procedure, possibly see her dad revived, her breath caught in waves of overwhelmingness. Alec had no idea what this meant to her. Silent tears ran down her cheeks as her heart drummed with pleasant shock and excitement. And we can meet there, so if at any time you feel like you need to leave, you're free to go. Plus, you'll have fun. We'll have fun. She raised an eyebrow, even though, again, he couldn't see her. He must have sensed her hesitation. There will be lots of people there. You wouldn't just be with me. And it's not a real date. Just to pretend boyfriend-girlfriend thing until we got back. And of course, you'd have your own room. A suite, as a matter of fact. It did sound inviting. He pressed on, a hint of desperation and hope filling his voice. We can meet up. So we can get to know each other more. Plus, that will give you time to ask me any questions you think of in the meantime and I'll pay you triple what any other company offers you. He cleared his throat. 
I don't mean to be so pushy. It's just that I'm on a time crunch. Sorry if I made you uncomfortable. Wow. He was serious. She'd never made that kind of money before. She sighed. But the money didn't matter, because she had to be around for her dad. I appreciate the offer, Alec, really. But I have to take care of my dad anyway. He's sick. Oh, right. You mentioned that. I feel like a fool. I'm sorry, Callie. I hope he feels better soon. Please forget this conversation. His laugh sounded nervous. She imagined him pulling at his hair in that anxious way of his. She didn't feel like getting into details about her dad, so she simply thanked him. Good luck, Alec. Thank you. When she hung up, something didn't sit right. Why did it feel wrong to tell him no? Her job interviews hadn't worked out, and she really needed the money. She moved into the kitchen and peeped inside the refrigerator. Nothing looked appetizing. Huffing, she shut the door and checked the time. It was still early. Maybe a good talk with Danny would help her think more clearly. Danny answered on the first ring. Hey, Callie. She swallowed. Hey. You don't sound so good. Is it your dad? Did something happen? No. I mean, as you know, he's been getting a lot of headaches now, and he's more tired than ever. Drat. Danny was the only person she knew who used that word. I can't believe this. Life really knows how to hit you when you're down, doesn't it? She informed her about the conversation with Dr. Matthews. That sounds promising. You'll be able to pay for it. God knows he needs this. Funny. God had opened a door through Alec. I called someone. What do you mean, you called someone? That guy I told you about, Alec. Her voice lowered. Oh. He wants me to go to Malibu Bay. She gave her all the details. Sounds reasonably safe. Do you want to do it? She hesitated. I don't know. Sounds like the kind of spontaneity you crave. She chuckled. I know. And it's not like I'd be alone with him. There will be a ton of people there. Now she sounded like she was trying to talk herself into going. Secretly, she really did want to go. Obviously, the money would help a lot. But my dad... I'll stay with him. He loves me like a daughter. It will be fine. True. He did treat Danny like she was his own, and he would be in good hands. She was seriously considering doing this. Thanks, Danny. I think I might call him. I'll let you know. She hung up as her dad walked in the door. Dad, you feeling better today? He smiled but she could tell he was attempting to mask the exhaustion that his little stroll had caused. She quickly ushered him to the couch and fetched a glass of ice water for him. I pushed myself a bit too much, that's all. He took the glass and swallowed a generous amount of water. After he excused himself for a nap, she thought about Alec's offer. She redialed his number. She could do a week-long retreat. It was just a fake date anyway. There wasn't any risk involved. Besides, it might be even more fun than their dinner date. Chapter 9 Alec finished scrambling the eggs and turned off the stove. The morning sun popped through the multicolored stained glass, casting a shiny rainbow across the pane. Hmm, he'd never noticed how beautiful the window could be. His phone chirped. Alec was surprised to see it was Callie calling. She'd seemed pretty reluctant about attending the retreat. Maybe she was calling about something else. I hope it's not too late, she said. He sat on a bar stool at the end of the kitchen counter. Actually, it's still early. What? He laughed. Just a little joke about it being morning. Odd. He didn't tend to make jokes. Oh, she sounded relieved. He sat up, his fork poised over his steaming food. Wait, 
Did this mean she was reconsidering going on the retreat? Is that why she'd called again? What do you mean, you hope it's not too late? Is joining you in Malibu Bay still an option? The fork made a clanking sound as it smacked the corner of his plate. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, good. Oh, good. Why had she changed her mind? What about your dad? I thought you needed to stick around to help him. Oh, yeah, my friend Danny is helping out, so it's okay if I'm gone for a week. How about we meet somewhere, a restaurant or something? I can go over some more details with you, answer any questions you have, and, like you said the other night, we should know more about each other, you know, to fully convince Leanne. Strangely, he felt like getting to know Callie better came from a more personal reason. Not to fool Leanne, but to satisfy his own interest in her. He shook his head. Ridiculous. Getting into a relationship happened to be the furthest thing from his mind. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm down in Riverside. Is that too far? He wiped the fork with a napkin and scooped into his eggs. Of course not. You're doing me a favor. I should come to you. What's a good time? Well, my schedule's pretty open, losing my dream job and all. She laughed, but he detected a hint of sadness. He felt bad for her. The job clearly meant a lot to her. His own career dreams had come true. But a decade ago, he'd been flailing around from job to job with no hope in sight and no money. He knew exactly how she felt. Hopefully, the amount he gave her would give her enough stability until she found something again. They arranged to meet this Thursday, two days from now, for lunch. She gave him the name of a steakhouse since they both loved steak, and he scribbled down the address. She also asked him to save her cell number so he could get in touch with her if needed. After they hung up, he finished his breakfast. As he rinsed his dishes, he wondered why he felt loose, so at ease. He couldn't remember feeling this way for quite some time. Why was this woman he hardly knew having such an effect on him? Running his fingers through his hair, he headed to the garage. He pushed the button on the garage door. His deep forest green Corvette gleamed in the sunlight. Donnie greeted him at the main entrance of the office a few minutes later. By the huge, goofy grin on his face, he figured there must be good news. Leanne called me. Or not. What did she call you for? He felt tension spreading into his back. She wants to know how serious you and Callie are. He snorted. None of her business. That's what I told her. But she wouldn't stop pressing me. Dude, she still has it bad for you. I can't imagine why. Gee, thanks. He chuckled. I'm kidding. Why are you so uptight? Leanne, he muttered. She won't leave me alone. They started toward Alec's office, around the corner. Alec nodded to his secretary as they passed the reception. Once they got to his office, he shut the door behind him and sat in his leather swivel seat behind the large oak desk, as Donnie pulled up an upholstered wingback chair to the other side of it. Did you call Callie? No, she called me, which is a good thing since I didn't have her number. Donnie's eyes lit up. So, will she be going on the retreat? Actually, yes. She didn't say yes right away, but in the end, she changed her mind. Thankfully. I don't know if I can handle Leanne by myself. So this whole pretend relationship thing might protect you from the flaming fire truck. Alec arched an eyebrow. Flaming fire truck? Donnie grinned. What's she like? Callie? Duh. He sighed as he settled into the chair some more, stretching out his legs. She's different than other women. Fun. Spontaneous, obviously. I mean, how many women do you know that would hop into a situation like that and pretend to be your girlfriend? Donnie looked up to the ceiling. 
Um, I don't know of any. She must be special, Alec. A person who willingly accepts a week-long retreat with someone she just met. That's quite a risk. You think it's a bad idea? Donnie smirked. She's willing to step up to bat for you. Help a complete stranger. That's outstanding. He couldn't think about Callie in real terms. This entire arrangement had one purpose, to fool Leanne. Nothing more. Yeah, Donnie was right. Callie seemed like an extraordinary woman. But he wouldn't allow himself to look at her as anything more than a temporary fake girlfriend, no matter how amazing she might be. Besides, Callie had no interest in him anyway. She was simply doing him a favor. Donnie waved at him and took off to his own office. Alec tapped a pencil against a notepad. Callie was clearly devoted to her dad. Her concern for him over her own needs was admirable. It made him realize that he hadn't had a real conversation with his own dad in months. He set the pencil down on his desk. Work had been his number one priority for a while now. He'd barely had time for himself. But Tara had proven herself in the past year, taking on duties as the president of the company and relieving him of some of those responsibilities. Which meant he needed to stop making excuses that he was too busy to make time for other people. Alec picked up his phone and dialed his dad. Alec, how's it going, son? Good, Dad. How about you? His dad's always cheerful voice jumped through the phone. As the conversation went on, they decided to meet for lunch on Friday. It felt good to talk to his dad again, like old times. When they hung up, Alec was smiling. Alec wasn't much of a praying man, but he said a little prayer of thanks for reconnecting him to his dad. Chapter 10 Callie smoothed out her purple skirt as she sat across from Alec at the fancy American restaurant. Every table had a bright yellow tablecloth and a black vase with a single red rose at the center of the table. The atmosphere suddenly seemed romantic. She cringed, hoping he didn't get the wrong impression. Alec ran his fingers through his hair again. Callie realized it was a nervous habit. His hair looked a mess, but somehow in an attractive way. He wore a nice dark red button-up shirt and sharp black pants. On his wrist was a thick silver-banded watch. It amused her to see a man who looked so put together acting so frazzled, which made her wonder why he was nervous. Steph had always been in control, but she'd mistaken his arrogance for confidence. Ugh. She had to stop comparing every guy she met to that twerp. He smiled. He looked so good when he smiled. She blinked. She had to stop thinking thoughts like this. It would only get her into trouble. They weren't a real item. She would never see him again after the retreat. Ready to order? Alec asked. Huh? Oh, right. She picked up the menu and skimmed through the pages in search of the steak section. They offered about ten different kinds of cuts. After scanning over them, she decided on her usual, the New York Strip. The waitress came to take their orders and came back with their drinks. A water for him, Pepsi for her. She couldn't help but notice the way Alec picked up his glass. His motions were so polite and proper. At the hotel, he'd been out of sorts. But now he acted far more relaxed, aside from the occasional hair combing. It was a nice change to see. That ex of his sure held some power over him. She knew what they felt like. Hopefully, their ruse would change all that for him. Well, let's start. She clapped her hands together. Let's talk interests. What are some of your hobbies? He tapped his glass with the tips of his fingers. I like to cook. Wait, what? A man who cooks? He looked at her strangely. It isn't all that uncommon. 
It sure is in my experience. My mom cooked, I cook, my grandma cooked. Well, well, my dad taught me how to cook when my mom left us. Her heart dropped. Oh. Her voice came out barely above a whisper. She felt like a big fat dummy. Danny often told her she needed to carry around a filter. Boy, she couldn't be more right than at this very moment. What do you like to make? she asked, hoping she hadn't already ruined the evening. Well, all kinds of things, really. Steak is my top choice. Then there's burgers, pineapple and chicken kebabs, lasagna. Her mouth watered. Sounds delicious. Who do you cook for? These days? Usually just myself. Wow. That sounded so sad. Cooking for one. Kind of like her own love life. The waitress set their dinner salads in front of them. They both started to eat. So, for a few minutes, there was only silence. She wondered what else she would learn about him tonight. So far, they shared the same taste in music and steak. And she'd been surprised by his desire to cook. Perhaps these were all little things, but they still impressed her, endeared her to him. It's a fake deal, she reminded herself. Nothing more. Fool Leanne, have fun doing it, get your cash, and go back to job hunting. As she started into her salad, she savored the sweet flavor of the restaurant's special ranch blend dressing. Normally, she chose their light Italian sauce, but since she was assuming the role of a risk-taker, it only made sense that she try new things. Alec lifted his fork with precision and a sort of finesse. Such mannerisms. Another nice surprise. Okay. More questions. He wiped the corners of his mouth, took a drink of his water, and continued. What are your hobbies? She shook her head. Wait, you're not done. You told me you like to cook, so there's one hobby. What else do you like to do? She guzzled her soda. I like to watch scary movies. She spit out her drink and watched in horror, yes, that seemed an appropriate word, as some of it sprayed onto his arm. He frowned. Are you okay? She nodded and wiped her chin, where some of the soda had spilled. Sure thing. Did I say something wrong? Not at all. It's just that once again we have something else in common. He leaned forward, his cocoa-colored eyes sparking with curiosity. You like scary movies, too? Sure. I grew up watching them. They're so much fun. What's your favorite scary movie? Scream. That's a direct quote from the film, too. Yep. Wow. Another point for Alec. She was growing more impressed with his taste in things by the minute. What about yours? The Fog. Really? That's interesting. It's definitely underrated. How about you, Kelly? What are some of your hobbies? Why did the way he said her name make her heart flutter? I like to shop and write poetry. What about outdoor activities, sports? Yeah, I like watching baseball. What I mean is, what kind of sports do you like to play? Oh, I like to swim. Basketball with my dad, well, until recently. When she left the house tonight, he'd already fallen asleep. He used to be a night owl, staying up until one in the morning. Now he slept at least twelve hours a day. But his sleep was disrupted. He woke up constantly, a terrible symptom of chronic fatigue which meant he spent most of his waking hours in a daze. You okay? Alec was staring at her. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was thinking about my dad. How is he? His face became serious. He's not doing so good. His symptoms continue to worsen. But I did get a call from the doctor. He suggested some kind of experiment that could potentially help him. Sounds promising. Yeah, only insurance doesn't cover it. A few months ago, that wouldn't have been a big deal. I could have made a few payments and be done. It's crazy how life can suddenly change in such a big way. 
Going from having enough money for bills and entertainment to living paycheck to paycheck, barely covering the bills, to having literally no income coming in. She shut her mouth, wondering why she was sharing so much with him. You're right. Life is a mystery. Sometimes it changes in the blink of an eye. He smiled at her, his eyes soft and empathetic. Wow. There he went again, surprising her. He really seemed to care. And it couldn't be an act. Leanne wasn't around, so he didn't have to pretend. Why did you choose accounting? he asked. Thankful for the change in conversation, she told him about her path. How much she'd always liked math and enjoyed playing with numbers. I'd be at the grocery store, running all the prices together, figuring the total amount after discounts. It's always been a fun activity for me. He looked amused. Her face flushed. Why was she spilling so much of herself? Alec was practically a stranger, yet he made her feel comfortable. It was so easy to tell him things. Accounting sounds like your niche for sure. I can see why getting that job was important to you. But there will be other jobs. Don't give up. Yeah, that's what Danny said. Sounds like a good friend. She is. My closest friend. I got well done for you. The waitress placed a plate in front of him, a big chunk of meat beside a fresh clump of broccoli. She placed Callie's plate in front of her. And medium for you. Is there anything else I can get for you? Callie looked to Alec, who shook his head. We're good, thank you. The waitress left, and Callie pierced the meat with her fork. A puddle of juice swam into the crevices of the plate. She stuck the bite into her mouth and relished the sweet, juicy flavor. She didn't realize she'd verbalized her enjoyment of the food until Alec said something. Sounds like it's delicious. He cut into his own steak, his eyes twinkling at her. There went her face flushing again. She put down her fork and managed a weak nod. Then she hid behind her glass as she sipped on her soda for several long seconds. So, have you ever been skiing? She swallowed a piece of meat too soon and started choking. Alec quickly handed her her glass of water, which she gulped appreciatively. Uh, yeah, I did that once. She gave a small cough. Not something I care to repeat. She'd made an absolute fool of herself. Danny managed to make skiing look as easy as brushing your teeth. But once Callie got up on the hill, all she ended up doing was fumbling down it. She'd attempted the slopes a handful of times with no more success than the first attempt. Ah, so it seems we don't have everything in common. Alec's eyes twinkled at her again. Her heart fluttered like a floppy butterfly. Wow, she really needed to get a grip. She wasn't the swooning type. Why was she letting him get to her like this? How about we plan a trip to the slopes? There's a lot of snow still. It will give us more time to get to know each other better. She dipped her fork in her water and spun the ice cubes around. Frowning, she quickly took out the fork and placed it back on her plate. Boy, she must look like a real goofball right now. She wondered what he must be thinking of her. I don't know if that's such a good idea. I mean, do you really want to spend the afternoon watching me fall on my face? You know the old saying, practice makes perfect. Darn, that glimmer in his eyes made him look so sexy. No, Callie, he's not your boyfriend. He's a man who needs your help to fool an ex. And he seemed pretty bent on this skiing thing. Maybe it would be good for her, get her mind off her current situation, the unforeseen future her dad. Sure, why not? He grinned. Great. Let's aim for tomorrow afternoon. Sound good? Uh-huh. He looked so attractive. She smiled back as she spent extra time chewing on her next bite of steak, determined not to make her thoughts about his looks slip out. Chapter 11 Alec met his dad at a little Mexican cafe down the road. 
It had snowed earlier in the morning, leaving behind a fresh blanket of snow, perfect for the skiing that he and Callie would be doing later this afternoon. Son, you're looking good. Alec's dad patted his shoulder as he took a seat across the table. Thanks for the invite. I needed a break from the heat down there. He still lived in the L.A. area, a good three-hour drive depending on traffic. So are you, Dad. It's really good to see you. How are you? Well, retirement has been treating me well. His eyes sparkled as a tiny smile spread across his face. What? Am I missing something? His dad didn't smile very often. He was a happy man, but he didn't usually externalize his emotions. Yes, Alec, you are. Your call couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Alec raised his eyebrows as a waiter brought them two glasses of water. Good news, huh? He tipped the drink to his mouth. His dad's smile cracked open further. I met a wonderful woman last year, Helen. You remember? Sure, I do. She seems like a great person. She is. And, well, we're getting married. Water spilled over Alec's chin as he coughed on an ice cube that got stuck in his throat. He snatched a napkin and dabbed at his chin. You okay, son? Alec swallowed the melting cube and cleared his throat. Uh, yeah, you surprised me is all. His throat burned. He took a quick swig of his water. Ready for a summer wedding? So soon. What he was really thinking was how his dad could trust in love again after Alec's mom left him 20 years ago. In that time, his dad had staved off dating until a few years ago. You're worried I'll get my heart broken, aren't you? His dad winked at him. Well, yeah. He reached over to squeeze Alec's hand. Helen's a good woman, a faithful woman. We're best friends. That's a kind of relationship your mother and I never had. The waiter came by to take their orders. After he left, Alec said, I'm happy for you, Dad. In this crazy world, it's hard to find a decent woman. He fingered the dessert menu, trying not to let his thoughts go to Leanne. What's on your mind, Alec? Come on, let's talk. Really talk. Alec sighed. Maybe it would do him good to fill his dad in, get more of the stress from Leanne off his shoulders. Leanne is back in my life. His dad's face went still. His hand paused around his drink. Alec, this doesn't sound like a good idea. Believe me, I know. But I don't have any choice in the matter. His dad's eyebrows flew up. What do you mean you don't have a choice? Nobody's forcing you to be with her. Huh? Alec looked at his dad's angered expression. Oh, no, not in the romantic sense. He chuckled. This is strictly a business relationship. His dad looked visibly relieved as he took his hand off the glass and relaxed against the chair. Don't scare me like that again. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it was coming off that way. Unfortunately, the romantic aspect is part of my problem. He shook his head. I'm afraid you lost me again, Alec. He sighed, gathering his thoughts. Innovations signed a contract with Snapshot Electronics. Leanne happens to be the company's president. Moaning, his dad's face softened, sympathetic. Is she a necessary client? Yes which is why we're having to work together. It wouldn't be so bad if she wasn't all over me. Can you believe that? After what she did. She always struck me as unbelievable. But this I don't get. Didn't you make it clear to her that you're not interested? Of course I did. Which is why her advances are driving me up the wall. He took a sip of water as the waiter placed a basket of chips on the table. Dipping a chip into the salsa, Alec continued. I did more than that. Well, it wasn't exactly my idea, to be clear. 
After the meeting, when Leanne was coming on strong, some random stranger came up to us and pretended to be my girlfriend. That's interesting, he smirked. You have no idea. He grabbed another chip and gave him all the details about that evening. So Callie is her name, and she's agreed to go on our week-long retreat next week to help keep Leanne at bay. Sounds like a winner. He looked up. What do you mean? This may surprise you, but it isn't every day that a woman willingly hops on board with a stranger to keep his ex fiance away. Funny. That was essentially the same response he got out of Donnie. Alec's phone dinged. A text message. Hey, Alec. Yikes. I'm running a little late, but I should only be another 30 minutes. Try not to envision me skiing in the meantime. I don't want you to be let down. Ha ha. He smiled as he responded. You're right. She's not like anyone I've ever met. The waiter set their lunch plates in front of them and refilled their glasses. What was all that about? His dad nodded at the phone. We're going skiing after we're done with lunch. Oh? Yeah. Something to help us get to know each other a bit more before she spends the whole week with me. You know, so it's less awkward. Plus, if we learn more about each other, then our fake relationship will appear more convincing. His dad bit into his burrito and mumbled. What's that? Alec reached for his own burrito. Fake? Yeah, you know, until Leanne leaves me alone. You sure that'll work? I hope it does. Otherwise, I don't know how I'm going to continue a working relationship with her. His dad wiped some hot sauce off his mouth and cleared his throat. That's not what I mean. Totally confused, Alec put down his food and sat back. Alec, I haven't seen you like this before. The tone in your voice tells me you have feelings for this Callie. Dad, it's a temporary thing. I'm not serious about her. I didn't say that, but clearly, by the way you're talking, you like her. Sure. I like what she's doing for me. Another text came through from Callie. It's not too late to back out. I'm sure we can think of better things to do than spend the afternoon watching me make a fool of myself. Alec found himself smiling again. She was so childlike, carrying an excitement for life with a sweet sense of humor he'd never quite seen in anyone. His dad reached across the table and placed a hand over Alex. It's okay to be interested in women again. Not everyone is like Leanne. Alec's heart stopped. He didn't think he had any feelings for Callie. He knew he certainly wasn't looking to start a romance with anyone. His dad removed his hand and placed a napkin on his lap. Anyway, I hope all goes well. The last thing I want to see is that woman get her nails into you again. Alec nodded and picked up his burrito once more. As he savored the meaty taste, Alec started feeling a little anxious about meeting with Callie. This was supposed to be a pretend deal, but what if his dad was right? What if he was starting to have feelings for her? He couldn't go through another heartbreak. They ate in silence for a bit. Alec pondered his dad's words, not sure if they applied. He checked the time on his phone. Oh, shoot, I gotta go. I'm supposed to meet up with Callie soon. He stood and pulled out his wallet. His dad put up a hand. I got this. I'm glad we got together again. We need to do this more often. He did something he hadn't done in too long. He hugged his dad. The moment was tender, and when he stepped back, his dad was smiling. Really good to see you. A light snow was falling when he emerged from the cafe. Perfect. A crisp layer would add to the wonder of their coming venture. He hoped Callie's experience would differ from the previous letdowns. Alec felt lighthearted about meeting with his dad. Besides the visit being long overdue, 
he felt a great load come off over his worries about Leanne. As he drove toward the ski resort, it occurred to him that he hadn't been skiing in some time. It would be good to get out of the monotonous schedule that his company had put him under. Skiing made him feel freer, less stressed, definitely things he needed right now. His mind went back to dinner with Callie. He chuckled, remembering how she sprayed soda on him when he confessed he liked scary movies, or the way her jaw practically dropped to the floor when she learned he actually knew how to cook. Her world, her understanding of things, seemed so different than his own. She intrigued him. He thought back to the day they met. Callie mentioned that she liked doing karaoke. He searched for a local karaoke place and found a new place that had opened in the last month. He saved the address to his phone. He hoped the day went well and she'd be up for her favorite activity. After all, she was doing something out of her comfort zone for him. She deserved a reward for that. The resort was only another mile away. As he admired the falling snow, he thought back to the remarks his dad made, how he seemed different, like he was developing feelings for Callie. Which wasn't true, of course. Their arrangement was simply a convenient deal for them both. She would get back to being financially secure, and Leanne would back off. Yet, as he searched for a space to park, he wondered why he couldn't shake his dad's presumptions about what was happening between him and Callie. Chapter 12 You'll be fine. You have nothing to worry about. Besides, if you fall, Alec will be there to pick you up. Danny winked at Callie as she struggled to pull up her long johns. Callie paused to stare at her friend. You did not just say that. Oh, but I did. She smiled. Callie sighed. This is just a way to get to know each other better, so we can fool that ex of his. Danny nodded. You'll get to know each other better, I'm sure. Callie frowned and shook her head. Anyway, thanks for agreeing to be here for my dad. That means so much to me. She finally managed to jerk the thermal underwear up past her knees. Of course, anything to see you happy with a new man in your life. Ha ha. It's all business. Nice try, though. Danny smirked and cocked her head as Callie rifled through the pile of winter clothes on her bed. What are you looking for? Callie flung a glove over her shoulder. I have to have a pair of gloves in here somewhere. And a scarf. Where are my scarves? She paused to glance at Danny. And stop with the assumptions, okay? She smiled. This isn't a romance. Hmm, last time I checked, you refused to go skiing with me. Yeah, but this is different. Yep. Callie looked up at Danny and threw her a funny look. The last thing Alec is looking for is another relationship. Danny plucked a pen off Callie's dresser and tapped it against her chin. Have you asked him? Callie had gone back to rummaging through the pile of endless winter garbs. Huh? Ask him. He seems likable. Danny, I'm not even looking for someone. Danny chuckled. Why else would you go to such lengths for the guy? He's obviously a decent guy. She stuck the pen between her teeth and grinned. Callie humphed and tossed a bright orange scarf at her friend. Danny laughed again and dropped the pen back on the dresser. Can I help? You've helped enough, thank you. She smirked at Danny and turned to sift through the pile once more. Why is it so hard to find a pair of gloves? I mean, what happens to the other half? Have a good time, and don't forget to share all the funny moments with me when you get back. She tossed the scarf back at Callie. Callie rolled her eyes. Ha ha. She waved at Danny as she left down the hallway. Oh, finally. She came across a matching pair of dark pink gloves. 
She held them up against the neon orange scarf. Clashes, but they'll have to do. She stuck them in her purse, along with a pack of bubblegum. She checked the time on her phone and squeaked. I'm going to be late. Sending a quick apologetic text to Alec, she grabbed her winter coat and went into the living room to say bye to her dad. She'd explained the quirky, fake relationship with him. He'd been perfectly fine with Danny coming to help him out, which made her feel a lot better about being gone for a whole week. Don't fall too hard, he quipped, as he rose to give her a hug. I'm sure I will. I meant with Alec. Callie lowered her eyes at him. Not you too, Dad. Have a good time, honey. He settled back on the couch and started channel surfing. Setting the phone on the passenger seat, she started the engine. By the time she got to Crestline, she realized she'd be 30 minutes later than their scheduled time. She paused to send him an update. No worries. See you soon. Steph would have been completely agitated with her. She growled. Alec was not Steph. She had to get that horrible ex of hers out of her mind already. As she passed the crest of the lower mountain, Danny and her dad's words pinballed off her. She snorted. The whole skiing thing was just to help make their fake romance more believable. Snow capped the tips of Douglas firs as she wound the car around the hill. A light dusting of snow fell to the newly plowed roads. It was so beautiful up here. She'd always wanted to live here because it seemed like such a magical place. There was a lot less traffic, less hustle and bustle, not the rat race she had to deal with whenever she needed to go grocery shopping or visit a friend. Up here, she could forget about her troubles and imagine a better life. The resort was packed. It took her several minutes to finally find an open space. When she stepped outside the car, she shivered. The temperatures had dipped a lot more since she'd attended the dinner party. Zipping up her jacket, she shoved her hands inside the gloves, wrapped a scarf around the bottom part of her face, and pulled a wool hat over her head. In the distance, she saw a good number of people tearing down the slopes. Snow was still falling. She smiled at the tiny snowflakes that alighted on her dark pink gloves, creating a beautiful contrast. Drawing in a breath of cold, fresh air, she popped a piece of grape bubblegum into her mouth and headed to the equipment rental shop. She sent a text to Alec, letting him know she was here. A few seconds later, he responded, Look to your left. She turned her attention in that direction and spotted Alec trekking up the snow-covered grounds. He held up two tickets. Ready for the challenge? With skis in hand and dressed in a sleek blue diamond parka, he looked like a professional. Hardly. I'm sure you'll never forget me after today. She opened the door to the shop and went to the counter. Well, that sounds exciting. He followed her to the counter. I need to rent skis and boots, please, she told the desk clerk. Beginner slope? she asked. That obvious, huh? Callie quipped. As Callie looked around, she felt terribly out of place. Everyone seemed to belong here, moving with confidence and ease. She, on the other hand, stood out like a toad on a bright pink lily pad. Ready? Alec asked, nodding toward a pair of gleaming skis and black ski boots that awaited her. Callie nodded and chewed on her gum, trying to distract herself from the nerves that suddenly attacked her entire body. She quickly changed shoes and tucked her belongings into a rental locker. It had been several years since she and Danny went skiing, but she did remember some things, like how to slide the boots into the binding. She smiled with satisfaction as the boots clicked into place. There was a decent line to the ski lift, 
maybe it would take too long to get to the top, and by then, Alec would be bored and want to do something else. That sounded pretty good to her. So, got any brothers or sisters? she asked. What? Where in the world did that question come from? She chomped down on the gum to prevent herself from saying any more out-of-the-blue stuff. He looked at her curiously. Am I not interesting enough for you? Her eyes widened at him. What? I'm teasing you. But to answer your question, no, I'm an only child. How about you? Me too. Do you like it? I always wanted a sister, so when I met Danny, I felt like I found one. He nodded. Yeah, I know what you mean. Donnie's like the brother I never had. The line moved steadily along. Callie's heart rate went up a notch. So, what was your childhood like? His voice turned solemn. Shoot, she'd done it again. Asked too personal a question. Too late, she remembered that his mom had left them. Where was that filter she so desperately needed? It's been mostly my dad and me. I actually got to see him for lunch today. It's been a while since we've gotten together. We had a really nice visit. How about you? Oh, well, I guess I can't complain. She hesitated to say more, thinking that sharing how good her mom had been to her might hurt him. My mom died a few years ago, so it's just been my dad and me. She laughed. Kind of like you. That's nice. That's nice. He smiled at her, but inside of it was something sad. Best change the subject. What's Malibu Bay like? Now, that's something we should definitely be covering. His voice turned more lighthearted. It's a gorgeous beach town with beautiful ocean views. There are these really neat trails that wind through canyons and waterfalls. It's incredible. Sounds like it. They got close to the front of the line. There's nearly three dozen beaches. The sunsets are amazing, too. Oh, had a bit of a romantic time there, she joked. Yeah, with Leanne. His voice grew bitter. Great, another stupid thing she'd said. She smacked on her gum and blew out a purple bubble that somehow ended up so big that it splattered over her entire mouth. Alex stifled a laugh. Heat rushed to her cheeks. She peeled the sticky goo off her face and tossed the wad of purple mess into a nearby trash can. Maybe if she looked away long enough, he'd forget that just happened. His finger brushed her cheek. You still had a little bit left. He wiped his hand across his pants. Callie was sure her face looked as red as a cranberry. Tickets? A teen boy greeted them. Alec handed them over and hopped into the lift. Callie attempted to get into the seat beside him, but one of the skis fell from her grip and landed in the snow. Grumbling, she reached for it, got a better handle on the pair of skis, and scrambled into the lift. Have a good time. The boy gave them a little wave as he turned to the next passenger in line. They were sitting so close together that she could feel the heat of his leg next to hers, and heat rushing up her neck. She needed to get a grip. This wasn't a date. Nothing romantic going on, just part of the deal. She was embarrassed, considering what he must think of her after her many faux pas. A moment later, they arrived at the tip of the peak, where a handful of skiers waited patiently to descend. Everybody looked so happy and excited. All she could feel was a nauseating sensation tying her stomach in knots. You gonna put those on or slide down barefoot? Callie looked down at her shoes and then the skis in her hand. She was sure she'd turned a darker shade of red, too. She managed to slip her boots into the binding with little hassle. Alec stuck his poles into the snow and pushed slightly forward on the crest. Grinning back at her, he said, Let's go. Callie swallowed and pulled herself to the crest, 
where she peered down. Alec waited a few feet downhill. She closed her eyes and said a little prayer, then opened them. Taking one last long breath, her heart pitter-pattering all over the place, she stabbed her poles into the ground and pulled herself toward Alec. Her knees wobbled a bit as she slowly glided toward him. He was smiling at her, a twinkle in his eye. What's so funny? she asked as she stopped beside him several seconds later. You aren't skiing across the Grand Canyon. He nodded his head toward her legs. She glanced down to see that she'd spread her poles so far apart that there was about two feet between them. Sweat purled across her forehead, even though the air was freezing. It's okay to go slow, but you won't get too far like this. He kneeled and gently maneuvered her skis so that they were closer and more parallel. If you feel like you're going too fast, turn your knees inward with the tips of the blades facing each other, like this. He demonstrated with his own skis. Wow. Alec made it look so easy. She adjusted herself, sucked in a deep breath, and plowed forward. Apparently, she plowed a little too hastily because she ended up tumbling over her runners and flopping onto her side, the poles flying out in front of her before landing in the snow. Maybe, if she kept her eyes shut, this would turn out to be some kind of dream. Flicking her eyes open, seeing the snowfall covering the tops of her skis, such a possibility proved clearly untrue. A hand reached out to her. She squinted up against the sun, glaring through the cloud cover, to see Alec. He wasn't laughing at her, as he should be, but looked concerned as he extended his hand. She took it and allowed him to lift her upright. I warned you, didn't I? She smirked. You okay? She flexed her legs a little. I think so, although my ego took a bit of a hit. As long as you're okay. For the first time, Callie really eyeballed Alec. He sure looked good enough to date, if looks counted for anything. Up close, she could see why that woman had acted like such a spastic case. This guy was gorgeous. His cinnamon-colored hair was parted so far over that it fell across his forehead in a beautiful, gentle wave. But it was the genuine care in his eyes that stopped her heart. They were a deep, captivating brown, eyes that she imagined were difficult to turn away from. Ready? she asked him, unwilling to let this literal trip up ruin their day. You sure? Yeah. He picked up her poles and handed them to her. She slid her boots back into the bindings. This time, she slowed down her movements. She jabbed her sticks into the ground and inched forward a little at a time until she was in position. Alec waited patiently for her as she wobbled into place. The hill didn't look too steep. If she stayed cool, she could do this. She plucked her poles out of the snow and began the slight incline. With Alec right next to her, skiing didn't feel so challenging. He glided down the slope as though he were floating. It was hard to look away from the long, even strokes he made. He looked so confident, easygoing. It also didn't help that he was extremely attractive. She tripped over air and plopped on her butt, landing directly on top of her skis. Callie? Alex skied over and knelt next to her. You mean Callie the klutz. He took her hand, and a tingling sensation shot through her. Whoa, best help herself up. She gently let go of him and lifted herself to a standing position, blushing at the involuntary groans that emitted from her. I think I will start on my own. Maybe watch my back? She couldn't think of a more subtle way to suggest that he get out of her field of vision so that she could concentrate. Sure. He seemed totally confused. She crabbed her way down the hill at first, wondering how other people passed her so effortlessly. 
Was everybody a professional skier around here? Wind blew into her face, sending a chill through her. She put all of her concentration onto the ground before her. Before she knew it, she was moving forward with some ease. Snowflakes whirled around her as though they were wings of a fairy. Moving like this did feel magical. Suddenly, she was at the bottom of the hill. She had done it. Alex slid up next to her. Callie, the skiing pro. Maybe we should do this more often, he grinned. Did he really want to go skiing with her again? Like, as friends? Of course, that must be all he meant. Maybe. Her face felt numb from the cold air, but she knew she was smiling back. Chapter 13 Alec angled his ski equipment into the trunk of his Corvette. How about coffee or cake by the fire? I know a lodge down the road. We could sit in the lobby, he suggested. Sure. I guess it's kind of hard to learn more about each other gliding downhill. He chuckled as he closed the trunk. Right. You can follow me. It's just a few miles out. Great. I'm parked over there. She pointed across the street. He nodded and watched her walk away. He'd had a really good time up there. Sure, he hadn't done much skiing, but maybe that's why he had such a blast. Callie looked so cute whenever she fell. He revved the engine and pulled out of the parking lot. Alec had been skiing on numerous occasions, but this time seemed different. He felt lighter, more relaxed, less concerned about doing his best or competing with the other skiers. His competitive edge came to him naturally. It's what had made his business so successful. But now, he just wanted to have fun. Being around Callie somehow took the pressure off his need to compete. Callie had something to do with it, he was sure. Her fumbling over words and her tripping mishaps brought a smile to his face, even now. He'd had a really good time. It made him realize that it had been too long since he felt this way. He checked the rearview mirror to ensure that she was behind him. Watching her fall and then get right back up, determined to keep going, had both delighted and impressed him. It wasn't often that he met someone who showed such spirit in spite of their blunders. He'd tried to help her, but she seemed embarrassed by it. Yet, he couldn't help thinking about the charge that passed through him when he touched her hand. He wondered if she'd felt it, too. A few moments later, they pulled into the lodge's parking lot. Are you a chocolate person? he asked her. Yep. She was chomping on something. Another piece of bubble gum? He must have been staring because she took in a loud breath of air and stopped chewing. He did his best to smother a laugh as he led them inside. Callie whisked away to a nearby trash can, presumably to deposit her gum. Strange. People didn't usually make him laugh. In fact, he found most people rather unhumorous and predictable. They have an excellent dark chocolate triple-layered cake. Yum. Sounds right up my alley. Another surprise. Most women he knew refused to eat dessert, even a small piece of pie. She wrinkled her brow. How do you know so much about this place? I mean, don't you have to rent a room to stay here? Innovations has done some troubleshooting for them. In exchange, they give us free dessert and drinks. Sounds like a good deal. They found a spot near a large bay window. Dark cedar beams adorned the wood paneling that wrapped around the spacious room. A fire roared inside the large stoned hearth. The view was particularly gorgeous, with a seasoning of snow draped around the sugar pine trees. A pair of chipmunks flitted across the twig-covered trails. Care to look at the dessert menu? One of the desk clerks stopped by. Callie shook her head and gestured to Alec. 
He had me at dark chocolate, that triple-layered cake. And I would like extra whipped cream on that. Alex smiled, amused by her sweet tooth. Oh, uh, some coffee for me. Black. The clerk nodded and left. Callie glanced out the window. It's like a fairy tale here. We don't see anything like this in Riverside. It's nice here, he agreed. I certainly don't miss the rush hour. Tell me about it. She tapped her fingers on the table. I'm surprised you asked me to come here. After my lovely skiing disasters, I figured you'd be too embarrassed to be seen with me. Of course not. I had fun. He noticed the way she looked at him cockeyed, like she didn't quite believe him. The server brought them their orders a few minutes later. Alex sipped on the coffee and thought about Malibu Bay. The business retreat was only a few days away now. After today, would Callie still want to go? He watched her dig into the moist cake, her eyes closing as she savored the taste. It sounded strange, even to his own ears, but he enjoyed watching her. She devoured life, embraced everything she did with a sense of contentment he didn't understand. But it drew him to her. He wanted to know more about her. He opened his mouth to speak when she dropped her fork on the plate. The clattering sound drew the attention of some of the other patrons. Callie's gaze was fixed on the door behind him. Frowning, Alec turned around. A couple of skiers stepped over to the counter. Their faces were red from the cold air. Alec faced Callie. What's wrong? Let's go. Callie stood and headed out the door without another word. Alec left a tip and hurried outside after her. He didn't see her anywhere. Had she left? No. Her car was still in the parking lot. He made his way to the end of the walkway and around the building where the view of the pines awaited him. She was sitting on a small bench, her back toward him. Her shoulders were slumped and shaking, as though she were crying. He approached her and squeezed himself onto the bench next to her. When she felt him, she glanced up. Her face was tear-stained, her nose runny. He dug into his coat pocket where he happened to keep a small packet of tissues handy, along with a tube of chapstick and a tin of breath mints. He handed her the tissues, which she accepted. Waiting for her to cry herself through whatever this was, he took her hand. She didn't let go this time. He took that as a good sign. Sorry about this, she attempted a smile. The cake tasted like heaven. There's nothing to apologize for. She sniffed and took out another tissue to wipe her eyes. That couple in there, I know them. That was Steph. His jaw tightened. He wanted nothing more than to give that guy a piece of his mind. Because for the first time, he sensed her pain from that past. Steph had hurt her, made it difficult for her to trust again. His heart went out to her. He knew what that felt like. Alex squeezed her hand. She leaned her head against his shoulder, silent cries racking her body. She felt so warm, even with the freezing temperatures. He wouldn't mind sitting this way all afternoon. You want to tell me the long story? She lifted her head and looked at him in surprise. Why would you want to hear it? Maybe it will help you feel better. There seems to be a lot of pain there still. She shook her head, as though she had a hard time believing him. You really want to hear it? He nodded and smiled at her, hoping she felt safe enough with him. The last thing he wanted was to make her feel uncomfortable, or to hurt her the way Steph obviously had. She sat up and let out a heavy breath. Steph was an ambitious man. He had all these investments to monitor. The stock market was so unpredictable. On top of that, he was a business partner in a multi-million dollar company that dealt in international marketing. In other words, he'd been too busy to think about marriage and a family. She sniffed 
and pulled out another tissue. If it's too hard, you don't have to go on. Or maybe you can try another time. He certainly didn't want her to feel pressured to tell him. No, you're right. It is hard, but I need to get it off my chest. She cleared her throat. We started talking about our future once his business hit the ground. At the mall, I knew he was getting close to proposing when I saw him eyeing the jewelry store. He came by later that day. I'd never been so excited in my life. I could hardly breathe. She paused, the memory shaking her a little. He rubbed her shoulder, letting her know it was okay to take a break. But instead of proposing, he broke up with me. Out of the blue. Said something like, it was time to move on. Then, a month later, I saw him with another woman. She was wearing an engagement ring. That was two years ago. Tears ran down her face. Alec pulled her close. Already he wanted to strangle the guy. Callie was too good a person to be treated like this. His eyes flicked toward the dessert shop. He could confront him right now, put him in his place. Alec? Callie was looking at him. What's wrong? He shook his head. Uh, thinking about what you said. Of course, he couldn't just go in there and ask for a fight. That wouldn't help anything. Besides, he was out of her life. He refused to do anything that might alert Steph to Callie's presence. Instead, he would be here for her. How do you feel? He asked her. A tiny smile lit up her face. You got your wish. I'm smiling again. For some reason, that made his heart go wild. It's nice to see you smile. Callie, you didn't deserve any of this. The guy clearly has no regard for a valuable woman like you. I'm sorry you ever went through that. Thank you. He wanted to take her mind off Steph. Hey, how about we do some karaoke? She looked at him funny, her nose crinkling at him. Really? I thought you didn't want me to hear you sing. His cheeks warmed. He was surely blushing. But you like to sing, right? I do. Great. I found this new bar and grill that has nightly karaoke. He checked his watch. And we'll get there just as it's starting. Okay. She stood and looked at him. Dried tears marked the corners of her eyes. She leaned forward and hugged him. Thank you for listening to me. He put his arms around her, surprised by her sudden move. But it felt exactly right for her to be in his arms. Chapter 14 They decided to leave her car in the parking lot and take his Corvette. This was Callie's first time inside of one. She found herself drooling over it. She'd always loved Corvettes. Owning one was a dream she knew she'd never attain. When he pulled into the parking lot, Alec came over to open the door for her. She hadn't been able to really check it out at the ski resort, but it looked exactly like the Corvette she'd always dreamed of. Dark forest green, sparkling sleek body. She realized he was staring at her. Clearing her throat, she forced her eyes away from the beauty, hoping he didn't think there was something wrong with her. The bar was hopping when they arrived. She loved singing. It had been a passion of hers from the time she entered kindergarten. This would be just the thing to take her mind off of seeing Steph again. She couldn't believe that Alec had listened to all of the details of her broken heart story. Most men she knew didn't have the patience, but Alec seemed to genuinely be interested in what she had to say. The fact that he'd planned a night of karaoke showed her how much he cared about her interests. She felt a tinge of pain puncture her heart. Would she ever find someone who actually loved her, was faithful, would stay with her forever? Callie laughed to herself, feeling like a silly little princess dreaming of fairy tales. What's so funny? Alec held the door to the karaoke area 
open for her. Oops. She didn't realize she'd laughed out loud. Oh, nothing. Ready to have fun? Her eyes were already fixed on the stage. Her heart sped up at the pending excitement. Sure, he replied, as he followed her to a table close to the karaoke jockey. Wow, there are so many people here. It must be a real happening place. The smile on her face grew bigger as she spun around. Colorful strobe lights splashed against the walls, illuminating the sea of faces in a rainbow-colored kaleidoscope. A large silver sequined ball rotated at the center of the ceiling, sending square-cut diamond shapes across all of the tables. The smell of hot nacho cheese and spicy chicken wings filled her nose. The whole scene felt so exhilarating. She hoped Alec wouldn't mind staying a while. She hopped from the table, rifled through the catalog of songs, and filled out a little form with her preferred choices. When she returned to their table, Alec had ordered them two drinks, a Pepsi for her. He remembered. Thank you. She sipped through the straw as she sat down next to him. Should we order an appetizer? Her stomach rumbled, as though it understood his words. Sounds good. Their nachos are superb. You can get all the fixings. They have wings, too. Super tasty. Both. He looked at her as though he didn't know what to make of that answer. Hadn't he ever seen women eat real food before? His reactions to her amused her. Okay. He flagged down a waiter and gave him their order. Okay, lovely people. Tonight we got a special woman, a new guest, Ms. Callie. Let's give her a big round of applause as she makes her debut. The karaoke jockey raised his mic into the air as the room filled with loud cheers and claps. Ah, he must mean me, she told Alec. Giggling, she flew up on stage and bowed. The crowd went even more crazy. She unclipped the microphone from the stand and belted out Estelle's American boy. The room erupted in wild screams, some of them even joining her from their seats. What a rush she felt as she sang out her heart. The beat thumped into her feet and shot up into her chest. Her spirit lifted so high into the air that she could hardly contain herself. Energy flooded her, rushed through her fingertips as she tightened her grip on the mic. Blood pumped through her like an explosion of fireworks. Even as she sang, she was stunned by how the pain from before disappeared. She only felt joy now. When she joined Alec after the song, she was sweaty and exhausted. To her surprise and delight, he'd ordered her a nice tall glass of ice water. Thank you, she puffed out as she gulped it down. You're incredible. He was looking at her with true amazement. She knew she was good, but she didn't think she was incredible. She just enjoyed singing. It made her feel free. Thank you. I like karaoke. It's so much fun. I'm not the only one who thinks it. Look around you. They want an encore. The whole dining area was pounding on tables, shouting, More! In the past, when she and Danny went out, Callie received a warm reception, but never anything like this. It felt so thrilling. What should I sing? I have no idea. I'm not all that musically inclined, so I don't know a lot of songs. But I am sure that whatever you pick will sound amazing. Okay, here I go. She ran back to the stage, where the chanting stopped, and a roar from the people arose. She decided to mix it up a bit and went retro with Ava's Dancing Queen. As she sang the lyrics, she noticed that Alec seemed completely enthralled by her. He wasn't part of the wave that some guy started. He simply sat there, a small smile on his face, his eyes glued to her. Why did him looking at her like this set her heart on fire? 
She kept dancing and singing, feeling so alive that for the first time in weeks, her money situation, her dad's condition, her loneliness, all drifted away through the entire song. But as she set her foot to the top stair to leave the stage, she somehow lost her footing and slipped to the bottom step, where she landed on her butt. How embarrassing. There wasn't even snow on the ground this time. She got right up. On the way back to Alec, several people stopped her to rave over her voice, ignoring her fall. She thanked them. It was so nice to be appreciated. You did great, Callie, Alec smiled. What are you referring to, the song or my fall? Both. She gasped as she dropped in her chair. He chuckled. Your voice, of course. The waiter brought them the wings and nachos and refilled their drinks. The food smelled so good. She dove right in. Anything to avoid any more embarrassing references to her faux pas. They love you, Callie. Maybe you should come here on a regular basis. Alec dipped a chip into the melted cheese and stuck it in his mouth. It was a good thing she was busy stuffing her face, because the way he said her name made her whole body turn to jelly. She did manage to mumble an, uh-huh. A few other customers made their way to the stage, singing mostly hits from the 80s. The high energy still permeated the room. After she finished a particularly spicy wing and flagged down the waiter for a tall glass of milk, she said, Now it's our turn. He looked up from his drink, his eyes peering out over the rim of his glass. What's that? She pointed at him, then herself. You and me. A duet. We told that ex, who shall remain nameless, that we sang that Grease song together. So let's do it for real. His body stiffened, and he set the drink back on the table. I don't think that's such a good idea. It'll be fun, I promise. His jaw grew rigid as he looked around the room. Did he have stage fright? No, I don't. Oh, my goodness. She'd spoken aloud again. Sorry, I didn't mean for that to come out. He looked at her for a moment, then his shoulders relaxed. Playing with a wadded-up napkin, he said, Why is this so important to you? I love the feeling it brings. It's liberating and fun, and when you're up there, you don't have a care in the world. Something glistened in his eyes. Was he reconsidering? I don't know the lyrics, though. Oh, no problem. There's a screen up there that tells you exactly what to sing. He let go of the napkin and scanned the crowd. When he looked back at her, his lips twisted into a grin. Why not? Really? You better get me up there in the next few seconds before I change my mind. She grabbed his hand, and they dashed up to the stage. You're the one that I want began to play, and though the words scrolled on the screen, Alec simply stood there. It's your turn, she whispered. His eyes popped out, but he took the mic, and a barely audible sound came out of his mouth. Higher, she encouraged him. This time, a loud screech pierced the air. Groans emitted from the audience. It's okay. Keep going. His voice came out seriously off-key. He sounded terrible, but she didn't want him to give up, so she kept quiet. He finished his lyrics and was about to continue Olivia Newton-John's part when she bumped her hip against his, shaking her finger at him. His face turned red as he backed away a little. She flashed him a big smile as she sang the verses. When the chorus came, he didn't join her. She bumped his hip again and pointed at the screen that indicated it was a duet portion of the song. Apparently, the audience thought their interactions were funny, laughter spreading across the room. Alec turned another shade of red. Don't worry about it. Just sing, Callie said. Alec joined her, and it sounded like an interesting rhythm, to say the least. You're the one that I want, she sang again 
and again, as she faced Alec. He sang back, mimicking the words. Was it her, or was something happening between them? The lyrics seemed personal, like they were singing for each other. By the time they finished, the room was hollering. She was so elated, she didn't want the night to end. Good job, bro. Some guy patted Alec on the back as they went back to the table. See? That wasn't so bad. She patted his hand. Then, as she reached for another nacho, he grabbed her hand back. I'm having a really good time. I wanted to tell you that. This is the best fake relationship I've ever had. He blushed. The only one I've had. She laughed. Me too. A moment of silence broke the laughter. She stared at him. He didn't look away. He was absolutely beautiful. The heat from his hand ran up the length of her arm. He leaned toward her and brushed his lips against hers, closing his eyes. His mouth felt so soft on hers. A zing of desire shot through her. Why did this feel so right? Did he feel it too? She opened her eyes. He pulled back. The evidence in his eyes said it all. This had been a mistake. He opened his mouth to say something when his phone dinged. His face hardened as he read somebody's text. What is it? she asked. He shook his head, his lips tightening. I can't believe this. He dropped the phone to the table and huffed. He rubbed a hand over his face as his shoulders stiffened. Alec, do you want to leave? He dropped his gaze to the phone again, then slid it over to her. She glanced at the message. It was from Leanne. I'm still in love with you. Callie's heart raced. She glanced at Alec. She couldn't quite make out his expression. He looked torn between frustration and uncertainty. Sure, they'd been having fun with this whole pretend thing, but maybe it wasn't worth it. Clearly, Leanne had no intentions of backing off. He took the phone back and shoved it in his pocket. I thought I'd made it clear to her. I'd moved on. He shook his head a mix of upset and worry filling his eyes. He stared at her, that beautiful hazelnut color melting her. Oh boy. But there was nothing between them, right? I understand if you need to back out. This is much more than you bargained for. He scooted his hand back and dropped it to his lap. His expression was mostly one of anger and annoyance now. I'm not backing out. We made a deal. Unless you want me to. Judging by the way he blew out a gust of air, this whole arrangement certainly didn't seem worth it to him. His face softened a bit. Only if you want to. Did she? He raked his hand through his hair, that nervous habit of his she'd come to recognize, and his way of subtly asking her to stay on board. I don't. The corners of his mouth slightly lifted. Thanks, Callie. She nodded, but her mind was on her dad, on that trial medication, on the money Alec would be giving her. Getting back to financial security would lighten the load she'd been carrying around. Alec's offer hadn't lost its appeal. After all, it wasn't like she had any other options. It was a win-win for them both. Chapter 15 Alec watched Callie pull into the parking lot of the hotel and felt his heartbeat ramp up a notch. He shook his head. He needed to stay focused on the task at hand, fooling Leanne. Besides, Callie was doing him a favor. She was here to convince Leanne that they were an item and to collect her earnings. It wouldn't be fair to her for him to complicate things between them, like admitting he had feelings for her. The kiss between them lingered in his mind. He had felt something amazing happening in just that single second. Had she? Callie stepped out of her car and caught his eye. 
a grin lighting up her lovely dark skin. She crossed the parking lot, dressed in a business casual suit and sensible shoes, black Oxfords, and her chestnut hair was pulled back into a loose bun. He was so used to seeing her in faded jeans and a t-shirt, wearing a collection of bright bracelets, smacking on a piece of gum, that her professional demeanor pleasantly surprised him. She'd put so much effort into dressing the part. Her lips were pursed, as though she were on a mission. No, this was a business arrangement. That was all. It didn't matter what his dad said, or that there seemed to be a spark between them. Callie hadn't signed up for a real date. He'd crossed the line with that kiss. He would have to apologize to her. He wouldn't let anything get in the way this time, not even Leanne. She reached him, her eyes flitting to the hotel. Callie, I want to apologize. Her gaze turned to his. For what? That kiss. I got caught up in the moment, the song. You know how music can trick your emotions. Her almond-shaped eyes shone in the afternoon sunlight. She was more beautiful than he remembered. Or maybe he was just allowing himself to see her as someone whom he could have real feelings for. But he needed to stop. That wasn't why she was here. It's okay. She offered him a small smile. A polite response to his mistake. He'd have to watch it. He couldn't allow himself to get carried away by emotions. If this had any chance of working, he needed to continually remind himself that any exchange between him and Callie was solely for the benefit of persuading Leanne that her relationship with Alec was purely professional and that his with Callie was entirely romantic. Except, he wished that were really true. Around Callie, he could breathe again. It was like he'd been holding his breath, waiting for Leanne to strike once more. But Callie's presence released that stress. It sounded silly, but he felt like a deflated balloon whenever she was nearby. A flash of red caught his eyes. Leanne. She was watching him from the entrance of the hotel. No, watching them both. He looked away and thought about the kiss he gave Callie. How could he have let himself do that? After what Leanne had done to him, the last thing on his mind was getting into another serious relationship. Besides, the women he knew were never committed. His mom had proved that when she walked out on him and his dad. His dad had just gotten lucky by finding Helen. Feeling the air in his lungs dissipate, he clenched his hands. He was angry with himself, angry for allowing himself to open up to Callie that way. Unwittingly, he'd given her a piece of his heart. He couldn't afford to do that, not again. Callie, taking her cue, leaned into him and planted a kiss on the corner of his mouth. Leanne scoffed and whipped around to head inside. He had to give Callie bonus points. She knew how to upset his ex. Now, if they could sway her throughout the week, he'd be able to get back to his role as CEO and continue to run a successful business where things weren't so complicated, where he wasn't at risk of getting his heart broken. She's not too happy, Callie laughed softly as she threaded her arm through his. That's because you're good. She smiled up at him, pleased by his compliment. We have a few minutes before we have to head inside. We'll be surrounded by everybody soon. Why don't I show you around before the chaos starts? You said this is your first time in Malibu Bay, right? Yes. With arms looped, they made their way across the sand. Remember those trails I told you about? He gestured to a distant cliff. Oh. She sounded hesitant. We won't be hiking those, he assured her. But they do offer a breathtaking view of the Pacific Ocean. They ventured forward, 
making their way through a low valley and across an unpaved road that ran beside a creek. They had to carefully skirt around sizable rocks as they approached the end of the trail. After several moments, they came to a clearing. Look, he pointed ahead. The waterfalls fell over the dam in the distance, creating a giant overhang above the creek where it emptied into the ocean. They paused. Her jaw opened as her eyes widened. It's amazing. I didn't know there were sights like this at the beach. In spite of the earlier promise he made himself, he found a sense of thrill as he watched her. He loved seeing her happy. Even if their alleged relationship was merely to dissuade Leanne, it was worth seeing Callie's face light up. I wish my dad could see this, she said. On the way over, Alec had given a lot of thought to the week. One of those things had been payment to Callie. It didn't matter if things turned sour, if Callie changed her mind and decided the whole agreement wasn't worth it, because he'd already planned to pay her for her time as soon as they got here. He reached inside his pants pocket and pulled out a check. She turned to him, the smile still strong on her lips. He handed her the check. She already knew the amount. But the look in her eyes said it all. This was a big deal to her, and he was more than glad to help her. Alec. Her eyes moved from the check to his face. My dad used to be so full of energy. He would have loved this place. His condition. She took in a deep breath and slowly released it. I've never seen anything like it. One day, he was fine. The next, it had zapped all of his strength. It just took over his entire being. She unthreaded her arm from his and waved the check in the air. This, this might change everything for him, not to mention the bills I'll be able to cover for the next few months. A tear escaped her eye. I am so grateful to you. He'd been wrong. He wasn't just more than glad to help her. He was filled with a sense of thrill and satisfaction. But there was something else he'd never felt before. A calmness that satiated his heart. If they never saw each other again after the retreat was over, he would be okay with that. Because being with Callie had released something that had been inside of him since his mom left. A fear that had gripped him all that time. Now he could breathe freely. She wiped another fallen tear from her cheek and proceeded back toward the hotel. Donnie and his dad were right. Callie genuinely cared, was willing to help others, even if that meant enduring uncomfortable moments with people she'd never met in an unknown environment. They made their way over pebbles and dried land, the humming creek running beside them. A brisk breeze whisked around them and tossed a loose hair around her face. Though he fought it, though he wished he could deny it with all his will, he wanted to caress her face. She was so beautiful, inside and out. But he had to restrain himself. It wouldn't be fair to create confusion in an otherwise doable atmosphere. Anyway, she wanted only to assist him in the guise and help her dad, not take on an actual relationship. She tripped over a rock and stumbled forward, nearly collapsing to the outer edge of the creek. He reacted quickly, swooping his arms out to catch her. Time shifted for a moment as they gazed into each other's eyes. He lifted her upright, his arms still wrapped around her. An electric current charged through him, and he swore he saw the same feeling of longing in her eyes. But he wouldn't give in to it. He had to clear his head. The ocean and the breeze and the beauty of nature was messing with his head. She stepped back, releasing herself from his embrace. I used to go to the beach. Huntington, 
all the time with my parents. My dad would get us all to body surf eventually, but mom and I usually ended up cozy, under the shade of an umbrella, playing cards. She laughed at the memory. Dad never understood how we could come to the beach and stay on dry land. But the sounds of the waves and the heat of the sun and the feel of the sand felt enough like paradise to us. How do you get through the loss? She stopped to look at him, tilting her head slightly. It was terribly painful in the beginning. I'd come home to a quiet house because Dad would have turned in early. He spent the first several weeks in near silence. Talking about her, even the good memories, took more effort than either one of us was willing to exert. She sighed and stared at the distant waves. But then it got bearable. Soon we were making new memories, even returning to Huntington a few times to honor her memory. I got him to play cards with me. He actually enjoyed it. She laughed softly, then suddenly turned toward him. I'm sorry. Here I am going on about my mom, when what happened to you? He reached toward her, letting his hand linger on her arm. I like hearing about you. I think it's wonderful that you are loved, that you enjoyed a mom who cared for you, that you got to share those moments. He cleared his throat. It made me realize how much my mom, what she did, affected me. Callie put her hand over his. Whatever you need to share, I'm here. Once again, she amazed him. No woman had ever been interested in hearing about his personal life, so he'd never uttered a word about his mom to anyone other than his dad. And even those conversations had only been full of him crying and lashing out in anger as his dad tried to placate him. When he became a teenager, he finally gave up trying to cope with it, trying to understand how a mother could leave her child. But the pain had never stopped. It was Halloween. I was ten. My mom and I were attending a party. I was Jack Skellington, and my mom was going as Sally. I couldn't wait to see her all dressed up. We didn't get to hang out a lot because she worked so much. He felt his heart freeze as he recalled that fateful night. I headed downstairs to wait. Dad was relaxing on the couch, reading a book. I asked where Mom was. The smile quickly left his face. He told me plans had changed and he would be the one taking me to the party. I asked him where she was. All he managed to utter was that she couldn't make it. He didn't explain why. I assumed it was work-related, like usual. But something in his face told me otherwise. I pressed him to tell me until finally he relented. The ice in his chest hardened further. Callie squeezed his hand. Alec, she isn't coming back. She left. That's what he told me. At first, I blamed him, and all he could say is he did everything to make her stay, but she didn't want to stay. He looked so sad. I had never seen him look like this. She wanted to be on her own again, was all he could say before leaving the room. He could still feel the flame of anger that spread from his face throughout his entire body. The fierce way he denied the truth the way the ache pounded in his chest, until he could hardly breathe. Callie's hand went to his cheek, her fingers trailing down to his chin, then both hands cradling his face. She moved her face to his, until only inches remained between them. Her lips met his, as soft as silk, forcing his eyes shut, erasing the block of ice in his chest. When they pulled apart, all he could see was affection in her eyes, and he felt guilty for letting her kiss him. He hadn't meant for his story to turn into some kind of sympathy pull. Callie, I'm sorry. Her face turned a shade of red. No, I'm sorry. I guess I got caught up in the moment. 
To lighten the mood, he redirected the conversation. So tell me more about accounting, some of the things you've done for these companies. Well, I was last working with this new software called Numbers. It's quite complex, but I figured it out quickly and was able to drastically reduce work times. And for the past few years, I managed a team as well. It sort of happened when the actual manager proved himself to be incompetent. The responsibility fell into my lap, even though it wasn't supposed to be a part of my job description. But I've loved doing it as much as I've loved working with numbers. Sounds like you are an irreplaceable person. That company you interviewed for has no idea what a mistake they made by not hiring you. She grinned. But he could tell that the rejection was still fresh. Her eyes flicked to the hotel. We should probably get going. Hold on. Why don't you join us at the meeting? You can share some of your accounting expertise. Would you mind? Her eyes gleamed. I would love to. I miss doing the work. Talking about it will be a nice break from keeping up appearances. She winked at him. I'll have you introduce yourself briefly once we get inside. Just take a few minutes to share whatever you think is best. It will whet our appetite and be a nice addition to our usual meetings. She smiled at him. Thanks. I appreciate that. Moments later, after a short walk filled with awkward silence, they joined Innovations and Snapshot Electronics just before Tara took the pulpit. Leanne sat only a few chairs away at the long oblong table. Callie's elbow bumped his as she settled into his seat. He moved slightly away, but she grabbed his arm and moved it back. For Leanne, she whispered. He nodded. But he couldn't stop thinking about what transpired between them only moments before. He knew he was falling in love with Callie, as crazy as that sounded. Had she opened her heart to him, too? He looked across the table at the many faces, stopping momentarily on Leanne's. Her eyes were drawn to Callie's hand, and her eyebrows furrowed, her mouth twisting into a grimace. He redirected his focus on Callie, hoping that his new feelings for Callie would be evident. Because even if Callie didn't reciprocate his love for her, at least she'd helped him overcome the agony that had plagued him for so long. The thought of her not returning his affection cut into his heart. Did she care for him the way he cared for her? She let her stare wander along the room, then back to him. She smiled at him. Was she doing this only for Leanne's benefit? He couldn't feign his emotions for Callie anymore. And because he would be more than just pretending for Leanne, maybe she would back off for good. It was the least he could hope for. A moment later, after everyone seemed settled, he guided Callie to the podium and did a mic check. After he was seated, she took to introducing herself and sharing a couple of things she'd done for the last company she worked for. He could tell that some of this information was new to his staff as his financial department leaned forward with interest. When she rejoined them, she whispered a, Thank you. He felt good about letting her go up there. He could tell how much it meant to her. But he didn't know how he would get through the next hour without talking to Callie about what had transpired between them. He was desperate to hear what she thought of the kiss, if she was wanting him as much as he wanted her. As the hour came to an end, Leanne's presence suddenly distracted him. A small smile tipped her lips as she glided her eyes over Callie and him. She now seemed resigned to his relationship with Callie. Not flirting anymore, not questioning the truth of their relationship. Something in her face declared loudly and clearly that she did believe they were together, and she'd resigned herself to that fact. Leanne nodded and flashed a brief smile of approval at him. Then Callie. He saw the sincerity of it in her eyes before she switched her attention 
to the front of the room. She'd finally given up. He whispered to Callie. She's accepting us. She squeezed his hand. I saw that too. Tara switched on the microphone. This isn't just any corporate retreat. You are required to have fun while we're here. A round of nervous chuckles permeated the room. Last time, too many of you were too serious. At Donnie and Alex's command, not only will I ensure that we reach the high-level thinking needed to strategize, we are requiring you to relax. There will be penalties for those who refuse. The chuckling grew amplified. Alec could feel the weight of his shoulders lifting. Tara signaled to Donnie and Alec. Donnie was sitting at the far end of the table and rose. Alec met him at the pulpit. Thankfully, Donnie did most of the talking. Alec could hardly think straight, much less string together a bunch of coherent sentences. Innovations Corp. has a new motto, and it's thanks to electronic snapshots. He motioned for Leanne to stand, then continued. We believe in a single drive, empowering everyone, no matter their role, to move forward together and never stop dreaming. The whole room erupted in applause. A band, that Alec had failed to notice in the back corner of the room, began to play a snazzy song, Journey's Don't Stop Believin', of all things. Alec frowned at Donnie. A band? Was I asleep when this was planned? Donnie chuckled. Apparently so. We talked about it at the meeting. Oh, wait. You left early. Sorry, dude. Forgot to mention it. So much for being a co-CEO. Anything else I may have missed? Donnie slapped a hand on his shoulder. Nope. But it looks like Leanne's bought the fake girlfriend thing. And she seems okay with it. I must admit, you two seem like the real thing. He nodded toward the table. Leanne was bopping to the music. She looked back at them and flashed a smile. Another sign that she was over her vexation. Alec sighed in relief, feeling his heart swell with happiness as he looked back at Callie. After the song, Alec took the podium and went into a bit of detail about the coming changes in the company and where they were headed. He rejoined Callie at the table, and they all spent the next half hour in a roundtable discussion, bouncing creative ideas off each other, laughing and expressing excitement about the company's growth. Amidst the banter, Callie reached for his hand under the table and pressed her leg against his. I'm having a good time. Thanks for inviting me. Really? Is it okay if we talk now? The discussion had turned into an informal chit-chat. Sure. They stepped outside and moved down the beach, close to the water. Several families dotted the shore. The sounds of the waves and seagull cries whispered through the air. I'm so amazed that Leanne accepted our relationship. Yeah, surprisingly. I wouldn't say that. I mean, think about it. Joining forces with your company is obviously a step up for her, something that will propel her own company. Didn't you say that's why she didn't show up on your wedding day? Because she blamed you for not making real money? Alec hadn't thought of that, but that made sense. Making her own business work had always been more important than making their relationship work. How did you get so smart? He quipped. She grinned. I got my smarts from my dad. Her mouth turned down as she stared at the ocean. I'm nervous, Alec. About what? She turned to look at him, her eyes traveling across his face as though assessing something. Why did you kiss me the other day? I mean, what did it mean to you? He coughed. Not what he thought she might say. Well, I... Alec, I kissed you, too. And I was the one who started the kiss when we got here. I'm not mad or disappointed. Nothing like that. I just need to know why you did it. 
he saw no reason not to tell her. She'd already managed to break down his walls, for which he'd be eternally grateful to her for. I like you, Kelly. No, that wasn't all it was. But he didn't want to scare her off by saying so. Chapter 16 Kelly wondered about the kiss and Alec's reaction. He said he liked her, but like wasn't that strong of a word. She liked him, too. She'd opened herself up to him. Aside from Steph, she'd never done that with anybody else. But Alec made her feel safe, cared for. The more time she spent with him, the more she found herself trusting him. And the more she found herself opening her heart to him. She probably loved him, but that didn't matter. He didn't feel the same way. Best not to ponder it too seriously. This was a business deal. Having fun was a side benefit. The only thing that could be taken seriously was the job she was getting paid for. With the money, she would call up Dr. Matthews and start that treatment. Just thinking about the opportunity for her dad to be re-energized, to get back to normal, made her heart swell with hope. You know what time it is? Alec asked as they strolled along the shore. An attempt to divert their attention from the sudden uncomfortableness made by his confession. She checked her watch. About six o'clock. He shook his head and gestured to the swarm of employees leaving the hotel and heading toward them. It's time for paddleboarding. Huh? This isn't just all business talk, you know. We're here to have fun. But I've never done paddleboarding. He shrugged. It's simple. All you need is a sup and a paddle. A sup? Her forehead crinkled. He wrapped an arm around her. This way. They sauntered over to the rest of the group to grab the equipment. Man, this is the best. We must have our annual retreat here every year. Donnie grabbed a paddle. He took off running into the water. Alec turned to Callie, extending one of the paddles to her. Ready? She took it. No. He smiled, and she followed him down the shore. The water was quite chilly when they waded into it, so Callie was thankful that they would at least be atop some type of board with this paddle-boarding thing. She followed Alec's instructions, dipping her paddle into the water. This was easy, she thought. Dip, push, lift, repeat. Anybody could do this. She pushed faster, breezing by Alec and Donnie. Uh, Callie, Alec called out. Not now, I'm on a roll, she called back. A growing wave seemed to come out of nowhere, and she smacked her makeshift boat right into it. She lost her grip on the paddle and plunged forward into the massive wave, her mouth filled with salt and water. She hurried to the surface, popping her head up and gasping for air. A hand touched her and pulled her toward shore. You okay? Tara asked. Callie nodded and spit out the overly salty taste in her mouth. Donnie and Alec hovered over the rocking sup, stabilizing it as they grabbed her errant paddle. A moment later, they all touched dry land. Hey, you okay? Alec dropped the gear on the sand and pressed his hand to her back. Yeah, that was about as fun as flopping on my butt at the ski slopes. Alec grinned. I see your sense of humor is intact. That's a good sign. But falling in snow tastes better. I agree, Alec said. I've crashed and burned in the ocean a few times myself. You? She said, surprised. He made a mock gesture at brushing at his invisible collar. Yes, even me. She smiled. It was nice to see him loosen up. When he spoke about Malibu Bay... He seemed to go into a dreamlike state. Now she saw why. The atmosphere soothed him. Here, he acted carefree, uninhibited. It made him more attractive. 
and reminded her of that kiss they had just shared. She wished she could put it out of her mind, but something happened between them in that moment. Something amazing. She was sure of it. Maybe he'd felt it too and had gotten scared. Or maybe her feelings were solely just her feelings. It was easy for two people to get caught up in the moment. It had happened to her and Steph. Great. Now she was thinking about that douche again. What a way to sour the beautiful scenery. Callie? Alec was staring at her. She looked around. They were nearing the patio area outside the hotel. You seem out of it. He looked concerned as they sat in opposite chairs at one of the wicker tables. She shook her head. Just thinking about how nice it is here. He smiled. It is, isn't it? I really like it here. There's something sort of magical to it, like you can forget your worries for a while. It does seem to have that effect on you. That obvious, huh? Heat rose to her cheeks. She glanced down, examining her fingernails, which were encrusted with grains of sand. You're right. She could tell he was placating her. I know I can be a bit tense at times. I can definitely breathe better here. He looked out at the rolling surf and blinked against the glare of the sun. He turned back to her, and she felt magnetized by his stare. She couldn't look away from him. She didn't want to. The next morning, Callie awoke from what might have been the best sleep she'd ever had. Not once did she wake, as she normally did in the middle of the night, to get a drink or use the bathroom. She'd slept eight straight blissful hours. On top of that, her window looked out to the Pacific, so her first view was that of the dawn in all its glory, the glorious sun sprinkling the sea with bits of gold. In the dining hall, breakfast included hotcakes and sausage. She licked the last buttery sweet taste of the pancakes. Next to her, Alec shook his head. He had dark circles under his eyes, and he stifled a yawn. At the far end of the opposite side of the table, Leanne was busy examining her neon pink acrylics, as though they were a much-desired masterpiece. Apparently, her nails had replaced her interest in Alec. Suddenly, Leanne got up and made her way directly over to them, plopping herself down right beside Alec. She tapped her flashy nails on the table. She sucked in a loud breath and pushed it out even louder. I have some news that will be good for both of us. Callie cringed. Now what? From the side of her eye, she sensed Alec's whole body tensing up. I'm moving out of the country and expanding my services there as well, so both our companies will benefit. Alec sat up straighter. I thought you just moved here, to Big Bear. Rented a place. Thought I'd stay a while. Her nose crinkled. I can't stand the snow or the thin air. I'm going to Tokyo. I've visited there several times since we broke up. Right. They broke up. I love Japan. Already have several clients lined up. That's wonderful news, Leanne. Really. And I can see that I don't stand a chance. You two are obviously a thing. Her eyes flicked to Callie's. As sickening as it is, you seem to belong together. She stopped tapping her nails and returned her attention to Alec. Her bright, fat, pink, glossy lips pursed into a tight line. Looking forward to doing business. Same here. Alec shook her hand. Leanne got up and made her way back to her seat. Did that just happen? Alec said to Callie. She smiled. It did. He took her hand under the table and squeezed it. She squeezed back. Donnie took his place behind the podium and woke everyone up with a boisterous, Good morning! from the microphone. Donnie opened the forum with talk about something he called the product roadmap. 
designating the product, engineering, and design teams to congregate in one of the side rooms and come up with innovative ideas for moving forward with Leanne's company. Leanne looked more than pleased at the prospect as she left her seat to join them. Callie was more relieved than curious that she paid neither her nor Alec any mind. It certainly would make the rest of their stay more bearable and enjoyable. Alec's attention was fixed on Donnie. A few minutes later, he nominated someone from the financial department to present the current financial status and the pending changes to it now that Snapshot Electronics had come on board. Hello, everybody. Jack here. The room hooted and hollered. Apparently, he was a well-liked guy. So, first and foremost, I want to mention the client's buying habits as we dive into our finances. Without the client, we are nothing. He raised his arms about, as though doing a wave like crowds did at baseball games. He turned to a large screen behind him and pointed a remote at the projector. A couple of graphs appeared a few seconds later, filled with data that intrigued Callie. She recognized the rows of numbers and what they represented. They were nearly identical to the spreadsheets she used at her previous jobs. Jack shared the before picture, highlighting the money banks for each department. He clicked to the next slide, where he pointed to a flowchart. With our new client's needs, we are able to do so much more. Here is our current baseline. You can see how it branches out into each department. Callie sat up. Her interest further peaked. She missed the feeling of working with numbers, of seeing progress, of things falling into place so nicely. He clicked again, a second flowchart materializing on the screen. But here, you can see how much more we are able to do. More than our competitors. Diving into hardware and software programs that only people have dreamed of. He paused to look at Donnie and Alec. Thanks to our wonderful CEOs, they have built a multi-billionaire enterprise. And now, not only can we build upon that for each of us here, we are able to make room for several departmental openings with more branches opening in the new future. Callie sunk into her seat, feeling nauseous. Alec was a multi-billionaire, one of the CEOs of the company, rich beyond imagination, like Steph. No, way more than Steph. Not just a millionaire, a billionaire. No wonder he was being polite to her about the kiss. He didn't have time for romance. Money was far too important. He was no different than Steph. Excuse me. She shoved her chair back and hurried to the bathroom without waiting for Alec to reply. She pushed open the door to the ladies' room and half collapsed against the sink. Her heart thundered, and she couldn't catch a breath. She looked at her reflection in the spotted mirror over the basin. How could she have been so blind? He didn't like her. Not like that. Yes, she was the one doing him a favor. But he was paying her for it, because he felt sorry for her sad financial situation. That's why he allowed himself to kiss her. Tears whisked their way down her face. What a fool she had been. The sick feeling in her stomach bubbled. She blew out a long puff of air and stood motionless, waiting for her trembling heart to subside. How could she go back out there? She didn't want to speak to him, much less have to look at him. She closed her eyes and waited for the pattering of her heart to slow, for her breathing to restore itself back to normal, for the courage she needed to go back out there. A few moments later, she wiped the remaining tears from her face and made her way to the table. Alec turned in his seat as she scooted her chair out. What's wrong? He looked genuinely concerned, which made it harder for her to sit right next to him. She muttered something incoherent and kept her gaze on Donnie. And now, 
I'd like to bring up Mary to speak with us about the art of negotiation. One thing you can count on with our company is that we never stop growing. He smiled big as Mary, a tall, springy woman, replaced his spot at the mic. Callie tuned out as Mary droned on about overcoming difficult conversations. A few minutes later, somebody else took over and started talking about rebranding. But all she picked up from the talk was the idea of starting over. That was her life these days. As soon as something seemed to be going great, her love life, her career, it ended. With the meeting over, Callie hurried to her room, but Alec was close behind. He grabbed her arm. Please stop. She whirled toward him. The last thing she wanted to do was share her true feelings, but she felt like she would explode if she didn't. I know you mentioned my company, but I didn't realize you actually meant that it was yours. He looked truly baffled. What's it matter if I'm the owner or not? She crossed her arms, barely able to contain her disappointment and anger. He nodded, his mouth tightening into a thin, straight line. I get it. It's the money thing. I knew it. It always gets in the way. She swung partly away from him, her face on fire, not wanting him to see how much of an effect he was having on her. Gets in the way of what? You can have anything you want. How could she have let herself grow feelings for Alec? Had he known she was so well off? Had she known, then she would have never given him another thought. He shook his head sadly. That's not what I mean. Her whole body turned hot as she looked at him full on. You didn't have to kiss me, you know. His forehead crinkled. What do you mean? I know you feel sorry for me. You're just being nice. And I guess I owe you an apology, too, for kissing you. If I had known you didn't feel anything for me, I never would have done that. Alec shook his head, his cheeks slightly red. Can we take a walk? I think there's a lot of things we both need to clear up. Her heart battered against her chest, her fingers digging into her palms. He looked sincere, even confused. Maybe they did need to talk. But that didn't mean she trusted him. As if sensing her hesitation, he parted his arms in surrender. You already have the money. You're free to go. You don't owe me anything else. That you went this far to help me says extraordinary things about your character. She studied his face. Did he really mean that? Callie, I appreciate you. Who you are. You're unafraid to be yourself. I love how spontaneous you are. What you've done for me. He sighed the tight lines around his mouth loosening. His hazelnut eyes pierced hers. Her heart went wild, this time because, annoyingly, she couldn't deny the desire she still had for him. He gestured outside. It's a beautiful day, and getting out in the open air, I think, will help clear things up. She dropped her arms and followed him, at a safe distance, through the hotel and outside, until they reached the edge of the water. Only a smattering of people dotted the shore. They headed east along the shoreline before he halted a few feet away from the pier, turning to face her. Callie, he breathed. I never intentionally hid my position with innovations from you. At the hotel, you asked me what I did, and I was about to tell you when... Leanne's absence distracted me. That's right. She remembered now. He hadn't been hiding it from her. They had been interrupted. Now she felt like a fool. When people find out my financial status, they tend to focus only on that instead of me. I end up with either somebody who likes me for my money or somebody who decides I'm this sort of person who's unattainable or unapproachable somehow. Either way, 
they aren't trustworthy. His arms akimbo, he gazed at the horizon, the early sun brightening the coppery strands of his hair. He shifted, facing her again. Callie, I like you. Probably more than I should. Well, more than I expected to. There's something real about you. You're good, in every way imaginable. She was stumped for once. He wasn't even mad at her for the way she'd reacted. And he'd told her in so many words how much he admired her on top of it. She watched his face, looking for anything that might suggest he had no interest in her. But all she saw was compassion and truthfulness. I like you too. There. She'd said it. But she needed him to understand why she had been so hesitant, so hurt by his revelation, especially now that he'd opened himself up. She pressed her lips together. I need to confess something. Remember when we saw Steph at the lodge? Yeah. I haven't allowed myself to be serious about anyone since he left. Steph was always busy with work. He had all these investments to monitor. The stock market was so unpredictable. On top of that, he was a business partner in a multi-million dollar company that dealt in international marketing. She cleared her throat. Which is why, when I heard that you were made of even more money than he was, I got scared. He'd been too busy to think about marriage and a family with me. Her voice broke. Alec extended his hand to hers, and she took it. They looked out at the waves, lapping the glistening sand. A light breeze swept through her hair, tickling the base of her neck. You're far more valuable than he ever realized, than he ever deserved. An edge of bitterness laced his words. His voice softened as he said, Thank you for doing this for me, for wanting to be here, for wanting me, he said. She smiled, all the tension in her body evaporating. I needed some excitement in my life, so thank you, she turned serious, and thank you for wanting me too. I'm sorry, Alec, for assuming the worst about you, for comparing you to that snake of a man. He tilted her chin up and kissed her forehead. I'm just glad you're still here. Was she really here with a man who cared for her, as she cared for him? It was so wonderful and incredible. She allowed herself to just be thankful for the moment. He ran his thumb along her jawline, and they stood there, staring intently at one another, holding hands, just taking each other in. He looked into her eyes. Callie, you're invaluable to me. Her heart thumped with bliss and wonder. She felt so precious, so worthy. And I love you. I love you, too. He leaned in closer to her, his mouth on hers, warm and soft. He let go of her hands and wrapped his arms around her, pulling her closer to him, until their hearts were beating side by side. She wouldn't mind standing like this for a long time. Even the way he kissed her made her feel like the world's most sought-out treasure. When they finally parted, she could still feel the light sensation of his mouth tingling against hers. His hands slid slowly down her arms, sending chills fluttering down her skin. In the distance, the entire staff of his company rolled down the beach toward them as they let go of each other. It's time, Alec said, a bit of humor laced in his words. She looked at him curiously, her heart still flapping like a wild bird. Time for what? A hike of the trails. Callie glanced down at her slip-on dress shoes. I don't think I'm dressed for the part. Alec looked at his dress shoes. Neither are they, but that doesn't mean they can't do a flat ground hike. She arched an eyebrow. Is that a term you just made up? Off the top of my head. 
if I had known we would be hiking, I would have packed appropriate footwear. Nobody knew. Just part of the spontaneity for the week, he winked. And don't worry, we aren't doing any hiking. But my employees are about to get a lesson in overcoming obstacles, thanks to Donnie's suggestion. Tara and Donnie led the pack. Mary and Jack followed closely behind. Clearly, none of them appeared to realize what was about to take place, judging by their flip-flops and casual dress. Donnie smirked as they approached. His eyes shifted to Alec. Ready? Oh, yeah. Donnie faced the staff. It's time for your first session this week in professional development. They looked confused, mumbling to each other. Tara smiled at them. I'll see you all in a little bit. Thank you, Tara, Donnie said. She's treating Snapshot Electronics to a special dessert, he explained. I want a special dessert, Jack whined in mock fashion. A nervous rattle of laughter scattered. Alec cleared his throat and drew everyone into a circle as he motioned Callie behind him. As we move into this new territory, we will be facing some challenges. There will be a lot of benefits from our transition with Snapshot Electronics. His eyes grew serious. But it won't all be a walk in the park. Sometimes we will be traipsing across rocky terrains. His gaze dipped to the several pairs of feet. Inevitably, everyone's eyes were drawn to the ground. And those terrains can be challenging at times. A concerned murmuring spread throughout the unsuspecting participants. Callie bit her lip to keep from smiling. Are you all ready? Donnie shuffled his hands together, a serious look spreading across his face. Ready for what? Someone asked. Donnie waved a finger back and forth in the air. Uh-uh, wrong answer. What you want to be saying is, yes. The employees exchanged more baffled looks. Everybody form a straight line, Alex said. That's it. Now shoes off. A string of mutterings filled the air as everybody complied. Alec pointed to a stream a few feet away. Pebbles, seaweed, and larger rocks surrounded the body of water. It's time for barefoot hiking. Three laps around the stream. He blew into a whistle that dangled from a cord around his neck. Callie hadn't even noticed the whistle until now. Everyone stared at Alec in silence. He blew the whistle a second time. I said, barefoot hiking. Mary jumped into action and led the chain of people to the water, where they began circling the water. Callie watched a few of them try to hop over the rocks as a shortcut, only to find themselves being forced to circumvent them. Donnie laughed openly, while Alec stifled his own laughter. Callie shook her head at them and smiled. Alec splayed his hands. It's a good hands-on lesson, is it not? She'd never seen him like this. Carefree, having fun. Even she felt lighter, just being near him. She was glad she'd been so wrong about his feelings for her. Back in her room, after a delicious dessert sampling of cheesecake bites, mint truffles, and chocolate mousse with both companies, she called Danny. Okay, don't hold back. Is Malibu Bay as gorgeous as Alec made it out to be? It is. She stretched out across the bed. I can see why he chose this location for the retreat. How are things with Leanne? Surprisingly good. Ah, so the fake deal is working. It worked. I sense a wonderful smell in the air. Callie rolled onto her side, the phone glued to her ear. What do you mean? she asked, acting surprised. Uh-uh, don't play dumb. You know exactly what I mean. You've fallen for real. Callie laughed. I can't hide anything from you. Why try? Danny chortled. So, how's my dad? Okay. Tired, mostly, but nothing out of the ordinary. Do I need to come back? No, he's fine. Don't you worry. So you've fallen pretty good, huh? Yeah. 
Oh, drat. I'm gonna cry. Callie heard her sniffling and laughing at the same time. See you soon, Danny. Okay, she answered through happy tears. Smiling, she ended the call and stared out the window at the incoming surf as it washed across the glazed and fused shore. Chapter 17 Alec finished brushing his teeth and paused before the mirror. He noticed something new in his expression, something that looked like happiness. He switched off the bathroom light and peeled back the white comforter of his bed. Sliding under the covers, he let out a long, restful sigh. The rest of the retreat proved to be even more successful than he'd hoped for. He and Donnie led a few more professional development sessions that ensured the employees stayed on their feet, ready for anything. Alec even surprised himself by coming up with one of the sessions. He knew Callie had everything to do with it. Before, he'd been too serious to let loose. But now, with Callie by his side, he felt free, anxious to explore the world less uninhibited. He slept peacefully for the first time in years that night. On Friday, at lunchtime, Alec blew out an exasperated breath of air as he settled back into the rhythm at the office. He and Donnie had been looking for a new CFO ever since Mr. Green had retired last month. The stack of financials on his desk blurred into one large, indecipherable document. He dropped his head into his hands. What were they going to do? They'd advertised the position since Mr. Green had left, only to come across a handful of resumes that indicated either amateur abilities, far removed from the expertise needed to fill the position, or resumes so riddled with grammatical errors and erroneous terminology that Alec ended up cringing after reading them. With a ton of financial reports waiting for him to review, Alec welcomed Callie's phone call. Callie? Of course. She had all the know-how and experience they were looking for. He'd bring up the opportunity to her the next time he saw her. Busy tonight? she asked. Alec shuffled some papers around his desk, attempting to create some kind of organizational system. What did you have in mind? You said you liked scary movies. There's a really good one out right now. Rave reviews. He smiled. Sure. Down there? Actually, no. I figured we'd meet halfway. I checked the times in Crestline, and the next showing is in an hour from now. And my friend Danny is coming. Maybe Donny can come too? Ah, trying to play matchmaker? I guess when you're in love, you start to believe that dreams can come true. She guffawed. Okay, that was corny. He laughed. I'll check with him. But what if he's not available? Is it okay if she still comes with us? Of course. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. See you soon. He hung up and headed over to Donnie's office. He was just getting up from his desk, his face lined with stress. Hey, dude, ready for the weekend? Alex said. Sure am. How about starting it in Crestline? Huh? Alec explained the situation. Donnie hadn't been serious about anybody in years, keeping as busy as Alec. He wasn't holding out much hope. Sure, dude. Let me just grab my coat. Hey, I think I found our next CFO, too. Callie fits the profile perfectly. Let's bring her on board. Callie was back to her usual wardrobe, torn blue jeans, a simple yet sexy t-shirt, and a grape piece of bubblegum popping around inside her mouth. Alec's heart did a silly dance. He felt like a teenager being around her, but it felt right. Alec and Donnie met Callie and Danny at the ticket booth. Alec pulled Callie into a hug, kissing the top of her head. She smiled at him, then gestured to her friend. Alec, Donnie, meet my best friend, Danny. 
Danny stepped forward and shook their hands. She dressed a lot like Callie, with her worn jeans and casual T-shirt. If it weren't for her creamy chocolate skin and curly dark hair, they could have passed for twins. Nice to meet you, Danny, Donnie said, as Alec was about to say the same thing. Instead, he nodded as he watched his best friend smile at her. Something instant seemed to transpire between them, though it just seemed like a friendly exchange, nothing more. Alec whispered in Callie's ears, You look as beautiful as ever. She blushed. Thank you. He bought everyone's tickets and they went inside. Popcorn, anyone? I'll get the concessions, Donnie volunteered. Callie stayed next to Alec as Danny joined Donnie in line. And I have something to tell you. Oh, yeah? I called Dr. Matthews. My dad starts the trial for that medication I told you about. That's wonderful news, Callie. He beamed at her. Her deep brown eyes turned serious as she grabbed his hand. Because of you, Alec. I couldn't have done it without your generosity. I would do it every day just to see your face light up. Okay, smooth talker. No need to flatter me. You already have me. Not flattery, just honesty. He squeezed her hand and led them to the concession stand. You're a junior software developer. Donnie sounded impressed, as Danny told him about her experience. Do you like your employer? She cocked her head. Uh, sure. What kind of question is that? The concessionist asked for their order. Donnie turned to them. You all want popcorn? Danny shook her head. Just gummy bears and a Dr. Pepper, please. Large buttered popcorn, Callie said. She looked at Alec. You'll help me eat that, right? He chuckled. Sure. And a large Pepsi, please. You know what? I'll take one of those, too. Callie looked surprised. No water? Boy, you are being so risky. He drew her to his side. Thanks to you. I'm impressed by your resume, Danny, Donnie said. Dude, Alec interrupted. What's with the invasion of her career life? We have an opening for a software engineer. He waved an arm like he was drawing an orb around Danny. She's perfect for the job, and I have a top reference from Callie here. Danny's eyes glowed with a mixture of embarrassment and humility. Donnie, relax. Danny has a job. Actually, I'm not all that happy there. I've kind of reached the glass ceiling. She glanced at Callie, who nodded knowingly. Her eyes moved back to Alec, then Donnie. I would love to join your team. Callie has told me so many wonderful things about it. The concessionist handed Donnie a cardboard box of drinks as Callie swiped the tub of popcorn. Danny plucked her bag of candy off the counter. Of course. Alec extended a hand to Danny. Welcome aboard. Danny's whole face lit up as she shook his hand back. Thank you, Alec, Donny. I'm so looking forward to this. I truly appreciate the opportunity to advance to this new position. She glanced at the mountain range in the distance. And a change of scenery won't hurt. Callie one arm hugged her. Congratulations. Speaking of jobs, how's the search going? You said you had an interview with that one company? Alec sipped on his soda. Callie sighed. Yeah, nowhere, as usual. Alec glanced at Donnie. You know, I think this is cause for celebration then. Donnie nodded. Yeah, I agree. Callie frowned. Come again? Donnie and I have been looking for an intelligent and reliable CFO for some time now. It's been pretty stressful finding someone who is qualified. But what impressed him the most, what innovations needed the most, was someone of her integrity. You're offering me a job? Her mouth dropped open. Yes. Tears moistened her beautiful eyes. But surely there are more qualified people. Nobody's come close. She looked at Donnie as though expecting an objection. He shrugged. Not at all. Yes, please. 
She laughed through the tears and hugged Alec. He held her close, his heart thumping wildly. This woman was amazing. After the movie was over, Alec and Callie said their goodbyes to Donnie, then Danny, before sitting in his car. What are you in the mood for? Alec's hand rested on the radio dial. Um, R&B throwback? He grinned. Smokey? She nodded. He fiddled with his phone, scrolling through names of artists, then turned up the volume on the radio. A moment later, Being With You played. The swell of the saxophone sent welcome shivers into his heart. I love you, Callie. He smiled at her as he threaded his fingers through hers. She opened her mouth, but all the words she could say were evident in her eyes. They moved toward one another and shared a passionate kiss. He could feel her heart beating against his own, and he knew that he wanted to be with her forever. Epilogue Six Months Later You ready? Danny stepped back and joined Callie as they looked into the floor-length mirror. The white gown floated a few inches past her pearl heels, spreading like an elegant spool of ribbon onto the floor. A pearl-beaded design encircled the neckline, and a lacy pattern wove through the bodice. It's breathtaking, Callie. She leaned over to adjust Callie's veil. Can you believe this is the second wedding we'll be a part of? Alec's dad and Helen had a nice little backyard wedding over the summer. Alec said he'd never seen his dad so happy before. She threw Danny a purposeful look. Don't look at me like that. I'm not even dating anyone. Well, that can change at any moment, you know, Callie smirked. Thank you for being my best friend, my maid of honor. Danny curtsied in her silk lavender dress. Of course, my lady. Callie chuckled and ran a hand over the satiny material of her sleeves. It's really happening. Danny moved behind her and squeezed the tops of her arms. And it's time. Outside, Callie's dad waited anxiously. Callie hugged him tightly. The treatment had been successful. Not only had his energy been restored, he had even more vigor than before. You look absolutely stunning, honey. He leaned back as he took her dress in. Then he looked at her. I'm so proud of you and happy for you, CFO, bride-to-be, and the best daughter a father could ever have. Oh, Dad, I'm not supposed to be crying yet. He laughed and looped his arms through hers. Danny, get that Donny guy so we can start this thing. She saluted him. Yes, sir. Donny and Danny, to Callie's surprise, had not hit it off, as a couple, that is. But they were very good friends, and Danny continued to amaze him with her impressive engineering knowledge and continued to keep him on his feet with her constant project developments. Danny's imagination was never at rest. Danny and Donny flashed smiles at Callie, then started down the aisle. Her dad leaned closer to her. You ready? As ever. The bridal chorus began. Callie's heart leapt. They made their way down through the pews. Their closest friends and family members filled the seats, and they all flashed smiles or shed tears as she floated past them. Her heart trilled as she spotted her soon-to-be husband. His suit was a deep royal blue, and he looked more stunning than she'd thought possible. This year had been like a dream. She had found her dream job, one she didn't even know existed, and a man who treated her like royalty. As she drew closer to the pulpit, she felt overwhelmed by the love emanating from Alec, the same love she felt for him. She hadn't known it was possible to love another human being as much as they loved each other. As they exchanged their vows, Callie's heart lit on fire and the warmth from Alec's hands in hers 
and the love in his smile as he stared at her, filled her with joy and peace. After the reception, she and Alex said more goodbyes to Danny and Donnie, who had stayed behind to see them off on their honeymoon. They would be returning to Malibu Bay for another week, only this time alone. Congratulations, you two. No other couple is more deserving. Donnie grabbed Alec in a bear hug. Hey, why wasn't that in your toast? Donnie shook his head. I don't get sappy around crowds. Have an amazing time and catch some waves for me. Danny pecked her on the cheek. She and Donnie took off to their vehicles as Callie and Alec walked to their Corvette. Just Married had been painted on the back windshield and a string of empty Pepsi cans dangled from the rear bumper. Danny, Callie called. Danny drove up and poked her head out her window. Enjoy my surprise gift. She winked and pulled away. Callie laughed, and Alec pulled her in for another kiss. Their lips moved softly against each other as their fingers intertwined. The night breeze swept around them, enclosing them in a soothing bond of love. When they parted, Callie still felt amazement over her new life. They would start their marriage at his beautiful home in Big Bear. Her dad would stay down the hill, but they would visit each other frequently. It was incredible to her how life could seem so dismal one minute and then find a way to overcome that hopelessness and discover happiness, a new kind of hope and joy that nobody could take away. Alec shook out the key and aimed it at the driver's door. Callie smiled and snatched it from him. I get to drive. I've been waiting for months, and today I earned it. He caressed her face and smiled back. Ready when you are. This has Epilogue. been The Uptight Billionaire, a clean, fake relationship romantic comedy. Written by Christina Ryan. Narrated by Amanda Fichter. Copyright 2019 to Lifetime by Krista Wagner. Production copyright by Krista Wagner.